and welcome to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube pregame show. We are getting you set for the Brewers hosting the Royals live from Miller Park. Steven Nelson, Tom Verducci, and J.P. Morosi will be on the call. But here in studio right now, it's Heidi Watney and Carlos Pena getting you ready for this game. And this is a big game for the Brewers because the Brewers are right there in the thick of the NL race. Not only do they still have a shot at second place in that division right now, they're one game back, they have a shot at the NL wild card as well. So two ways to kind of get into this expanded postseason for the Brewers. And it's exciting times in Milwaukee right now, Carlos. Yeah, no doubt about it. And as a player, when you arrive to the ballpark, and you know that you're playing for something. That's really all you want. I mean, you come out there full of energy, just trying to make sure that you contribute, right, to help the cause. And mm -hmm. right here, the Brewers down the stretch, they could certainly see the finish line and sneak into the postseason if they could. Right, facing the Royals for these next three games, it's going to be big because you want to take advantage of the teams that are not in the postseason race right now. But then they've got the Reds and the Cardinals, the two teams that they're chasing right now. The Brewers have been hot in September, but so have the Reds lately. And the Cardinals have so many games to make up. You know, it, it's really anyone's game. But let's take a look at some of the Brewers' numbers from September. They did the same thing last year. They really got hot when it counted and made their way into the postseason last year, of course lost that wild card game but if you look at the comparisons here 20 and 7 in uh, September in 2019 they're 7 and 8 so far this month but they're scoring runs uh, they're getting they're getting some good outings from their starters lately their bullpen's been a little up and down this year um, but with that flamethrower at the back end there you can yeah. never count out the Brewers <laughs> bullpen Indeed, but let me tell you, now you look back, right, earlier in the year, and you're like, man, that game that slipped away from us. Mm -hmm. You know, they've really given away opportunities to beat the teams that they were supposed to beat, um, and, and that hurts you at the end. So now you're, like, scrambling for that one more win that you could have had earlier. But at this moment, you just have to just put that stuff behind. Every pitch matters from here on out. It's really interesting, like you say, so many people had counted the Brewers out. Like, ah, the Brewers, they're just, we thought it was going to be a good year for them, but, you know, they, they've fallen too far back. But they're right in the thick of the race now. And every game counts, and you can't really look back. You can only look forward. Let's take a look at our starting lineup for today from these Brewers. We've got Whit, uh, Avisel Garcia at the DH leading off. Christian Yelich in there. He's had a hot and cold year for them, but he's been better over the last week. He seems to be getting his stroke back. Ryan Braun, uh, Jed Jerko, Keston Hira. We're going to hear from one of the newest members of the Brewers in just a bit. But, uh, but Ryan Braun, he's been kind of a steadying force for them this year. Carlos, what are you seeing from him? Goodness, I'll tell you what, he's been a steadying force for many years for the Brewers. But, you know, at the beginning of the year, he really had a tough time. Uh, and it had to do with his timing. Every time you're going to hear me talk hitting, I'm going to go to timing immediately. That's the first thing I go to. And he was really off uh, in his timing at the beginning of the season. You can kind of tell his hip was flying immediately open as soon as he saw the pitch. He had to rush to it, and you see him chasing pitches, being late on elevated fastballs. Right here with the slider, you see that he even gave himself a chance. He's just pulling off because he's late getting ready. But then, you know, he got himself started a little bit earlier. A couple clicks, you can almost, you, it's almost unnoticeable. But then it allows him to get that healthy swing on the baseball, and when he does that, man, he just comes up with huge hits. And I'm gonna give you a split screen right here. If you see on the left, the hip flew open immediately. That's a sign, a symptom of being late. Here, he's a lot more calmer early. Look how he gives himself enough time to get this healthy hack at the baseball. When he does this, he is clutch. He delivers. Look, he's been clutch, you know, all his life with the Brewers right here, the wild card uh, game in 2008. This one clinched it for them. That was an absolute blast, and you see him all pumped up. He's come through time and time again for the Brewers. This is this helped him right here, plus the NL West with this big uh, NL Center with this huge home run hit oh, <laughs> hit a ton, as you can see. That's what you call a placa to Heidi. Right? <laughs> But again, getting ready early, man. When he's able to get ready early, he does this. This is the Grand Slam in 2019 against the St. Louis Cardinals. Huge hit. He is so clutch. Literally, all he has to do is make sure that his timing, that could go for anybody. Yeah. But when he is 
dialed in with his timing, getting ready early enough and being able to deliver that clean blow to the baseball, he's dangerous. How much do you think the condensed spring training 2.0 summer camp and, and just the kind of craziness of this season could have affected some of those bigger hitters like Ryan Braun, Christian Yelich, who got off to slow starts to this season? Oh, it, it most definitely affects you. I mean, you are used to a certain type of routine and all of a sudden that's taken away from you and this is new, but instead of complicating things, I wish hitters, like myself, even when I was younger, let's go back to the basics. What's number one? Timing. That's where we got to go first instead of mechanics. I think Ryan Braun's got that down right now. All right. Well, we're going to talk to another one of the Brewers' big boppers in Daniel Vogelbach in just a little bit. And Carl also talks some hitting. And I'll talk about what's like to be in a pennant <laughs> race here. But uh, first, let's take a look at our Royals lineup for today. See what they're rolling out there. We've got Whit Merrifield at the top in right field. We'll talk to him in just a bit, too. Adalberto Mondesi, Salvador Perez. I mean, dude has been on fire this year. Now that locked he's cleared in. up the, the eye infection, he's, he is locked in, and he's such a leader on that team, such a fun guy to watch. Alex Gordon out there in left field. Nicky Lopez at second base. So, uh, speaking of Whit Merrifield, you want to hear from him? Oh, yeah, please. I think it's a good idea to talk to him. Love to. All right. Whit Merrifield has a 30-game hitting streak, and he's digging for three. With Bunch, it's a good one. That's going to be a base hit, and we've got a new Royals record. You can't sneak a piece of cheese by a hungry Whit. Oh, man, that's just a nice, easy swing. His pitch recognition is off the charts. We are getting ready to talk to Whit Merrifield, and if you take a look here, his stats compare very favorably with an all-time Royals great and a Hall of Famer, George Brett. And with that, I want to welcome in Whit. How does it feel, Whit, to be compared to such a prestigious player in not only the Royals organization, but in all of MLB in George Brett? What do you think about that? George is a legend. He's, he's a legend. He, uh... I love having George around, and um, he's been great to everybody, not just myself, but to be in the same even breath as a guy like that is, is pretty, it's a pretty big honor. Uh, Wit, look, I, I'm not sure if you're aware of what they're calling you out on the street to hit Wit. And uh, since the World War II, you're one of six players. You are number one in hits since then. So I know you don't look at stats, but let's talk a little hitting. What are you thinking when you go up to the plate? Well, uh, you kind of have to come up with a game plan, uh, know who you're facing, another pitcher, and then step in the box, trust the preparation that you put in, trust your game plan, and uh, get something over the plate and just try to hit it hard. Um, certain pitchers dictate certain approaches for me and certain um, almost swing paths that I'm going to take. And uh, knowing that and knowing how my swing works uh, has given me some success. I'm sure you and Carlos can talk hitting all day, but Whit, your team has won seven of the last eight games. You're kind of playing the role of spoiler down the stretch. Do you relish that role? Is it kind of fun for you guys to see if you can knock other teams out? Or, you know, what's the mood like in the clubhouse right now? It's great. Uh, we're playing good baseball. Um, we have a lot of a lot of guys that are uh, really kind of coming to their own, especially our, our young pitching. And... Um, we're excited about what we have. We, we feel really good about our team. Our bullpen's been phenomenal all year. Uh, our offense is starting to play better, and our, pit, our starting pitching has been really good. So uh, we're happy to see it all put together, and we're going to hopefully continue to play good baseball these last 10 games and, um, and see what happens. But as far as the spoiler goes, you know, we're not really worried about that. We're just worried about ourselves and playing good baseball. Well, you know, one of the things I noticed is that regardless where you are in the standings as a team, you don't give at bats away. You don't. And that resiliency, where did, it, where did it start? You know, were you like that in the minor leagues? Where did you learn to just battle out every single pitch, every single at bat? Honestly, it came from uh, college. My college coach, Ray Tanner, um, would constantly get on me about uh, complacency and being complacent and, uh, and never, never giving in a bat, never giving, giving a play away. And, that stuck with me uh, throughout throughout all these years, and it took me a long time to get to the big leagues. And um, I'm enjoying every every game, every at bat I have up here, and I'm not taking any of it for granted. Well, kind of in that same vein, it can be hard to be kind of playing out the string. You guys obviously aren't in postseason contention right now. No fans in the stands. I mean, not to be Debbie Downer, but how do you have that motivation every day to get out there and grind away? And I know the season's almost done, but it can be tough sometimes. 
it's definitely tougher this year than any other year uh, by far. This has been the most mentally challenging uh, year uh, of anyone I've played in the big leagues. Um, it's, but at the same time, you know, this is our job. This is what we get paid to do. We get paid to come out here and and play every day, and um, you know they expect a certain type of performance from us. So. We, we come out and do our job and uh, you got this year is different though because you have to generate your own adrenaline generate your own energy um, but like I said it's our job so it's up to us to do it we're going through all these difficult times you know this year um, you come together as a team and uh, speaking of team I want to know which teammate has impressed impressed you the most uh, out there with their performance you know we got a we got a young starter named Brady Singer that's um, He's a rookie. Uh, he's hasn't. He was drafted, I think, two years ago, so he hasn't had a lot of time in pro ball. But watching him grow uh, as this year has gone on has been really impressive. Uh, I think his last, so two outings ago, he carried a no-hitter to the ninth inning. Uh, and last outing, he almost had an immaculate inning, his first inning. Um, but not only that, he's just been, the last two appearances has just been dominant. And just for a young kid like that to, to have hit, he, he didn't pitch great his first couple outings, um, but he did enough to keep us in the game and to continue to, for him to grow and learn has been extremely impressive. So I was watching that game, the no-hitter, the near no-hitter from studio, and to me it looked like Brady was ready to vomit the whole time. Have you talked to him about that experience and just his nerves heading into the later innings with the no-hitter going? Yeah, yeah, we, we you know, I, I kid with him. Uh, a lot. He's he's a rookie, so you got to kind of give him, give him a tough go of it. But you know, I was like, man, you, you can't even. We had we had our rookie dress up, and I was kidding him about not being able to do the no hitter and not being able to have the immaculate inning. Um, but we talked a little bit after the game, and you know, he he kind of laughed and said, man, I wonder how many how many beers my dad's deep right now. Uh, <laughs> he says he gets super nervous. So Brady's a super composed, calm kid. Uh, but it doesn't, I haven't met his dad, but it doesn't sound like his dad is the same way. I see. I see. Always fun. Fun and games there. You got a new manager this year in Mike Matheny. So that's a, a new thing for you with the Royals. I know you've been here for a while. You're a little bit more of maybe a veteran on the team. But what's it been like to play for Matheny? Mike's been awesome. He, he demands a lot out of us. Uh, he expects to win, expects to win now. And that's exactly what this team needed. And I think it's showing up late in the season, you know, kind of understanding where we are. Um, but the guys continue to go out and play well and play hard every day, and uh, that reflects a lot on our manager and our GM, Dayton Moore. All right, thank you so much for joining us, Wit. Good luck in the game tonight. It is Royals and Brewers. Thank you, guys. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week on YouTube here. We're getting you set for the Brewers and the Royals. And the Brewers are right in the thick of a playoff race. And one of the newest members of the Brewers is joining us right now, Daniel Vogelbach, who's only been there a couple of weeks. But, Daniel, i got to ask you, you're, you come over and you're inserted right into a playoff race. What's that like for you? I mean, it's a lot different. I'm not used to... Uh you know, playing, um, you know, playoff baseball late in the, late in the season. Um, and it's, it's very contagious. I was very excited to get over here and, um, you know, do my part and, um, you know, try to help the team win every day. And it's a great group over here, and I'm just uh, very excited to be here. All right, Daniel, let's talk a little hitting. <laughs> let's dive right into it. Look, <laughs> don't take this as an insult, but your swing is not graceful at, at all. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. It's so savage. And, and, and that's right up my alley. Can you please talk about your approach at the plate? Because it's fierce, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to be a hitter first, um, you know, and try to take my hits the other way. And um you know really use the whole field and when you know a pitcher makes a mistake i really try to you know that's when it's time for me to do damage and um it's sometimes you know you don't get pitches to do damage with and i think that's where i take my pride in uh taking my walks and limiting my bats in those times so when i am you know getting pitches to drive uh you know it adds up quicker 
I know you're sure positivity train is something that the brewers have been preaching, but it probably is really appropriate for you. I mean, you're a member of the Mariners. They traded you to the Blue Jays. You're only there for two days. You get DFA'd. You get picked up by the brewers. It's got to have been quite an emotional journey for you these last couple of weeks. What was all that like for you to go through? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely, uh, I mean, being with the Mariners parts of the last five years, um, getting to know a lot of those guys, having a lot of close friends over there, and then, you know, leaving there and going to Toronto for a short period of time and then not knowing what's going to happen. Um, you know, just, I mean, I think the shirt says it all, just trying to stay positive and um, believing in myself and knowing that, you know, when I do get an opportunity again that um, I'm going to take full advantage of it and uh, get right back to doing what I know I can do. So here you are, Daniel, and uh, the Brewers are just on the brink of, of breaking into the postseason, right, that last wild card spot. Um, as a team, what's your approach like here down the stretch, knowing that you're going to go on the road and you will have an opportunity to face San Luis with a doubleheader um, the 25th, I believe, Friday? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, everything's right in front of us, um, you know, it's a lot, a lot of times in this game that you get to, you get to control everything, and you know going forward we got to get to control our own destiny. And uh, we play Cincinnati for three. Obviously, we have three very important games against um, the Royals at home, and then we go to uh, St. Louis. So I think the biggest thing is not looking far ahead and taking it day by day and game by game and controlling uh, each game at one at a time. Well, speaking of day by day and game by game, offensively, you've been on a tear since joining the Brewers. What's been the difference for you offensively there versus earlier this season? Uh, you know, I mean, I think that a little bit of it is to short season. So, you know, little slumps get magnified into really big, big slumps. Uh, so obviously didn't get off to a hot start. But, you know, just really going back to being a hitter, um, taking my hits the other way, uh, not swinging at balls. And, you know, when they make a mistake, uh, trying to do damage. And that's the biggest thing for me. And I've always been confident in my abilities at the plate. Um, I always believe that I can hit. And, you know, going through the past couple little things with the Mariners in Toronto, I never really lost that confidence in myself. All right, Daniel, lighthearted question here, but serious. I really want to know, number one, how much you bench? And can you please tell me your uh, training regimen? Because I'm trying to bulk up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much I bench. <laughs> um, but, oh, you know, come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying 350, man. I'm saying 350. I don't know. Last time I benched was Kyle Seeger and I had a little uh, – competition in uh, Houston and I, I won so that's uh, <laughs> that's the last time that I benched Kyle and I have a little um, friendly competition and everything so that was that was the last time that I benched oh, well, good to hear you beat him <laughs> speaking of friendly competition now you've joined a team with Christian Yelich and he said the other day that you've been such a great addition to the team and a, a positive guy in the clubhouse and that they're really lucky to have you what's it like playing with a guy like that or a guy like Ryan Braun who's won an MVP you know some of the more uh, bigger guys bigger personalities in that clubhouse yeah um, you know Obviously, watching um, Christian play on TV and then, you know, last year coming here and playing against him, um, you know, you have a perception of people and then you get here and um, it's the same exact perception that I thought um, from afar. Um, he works hard. He cares about winning. Um, he plays every single day. And, um, you know, I think it's kind of cool, especially in day, uh, days like this when, you know, it's a weird season and it's easy to complain. Um, you know, obviously he's not performing the way he wants to perform, and you would never know it. He works every day. He comes every day, the same attitude. Um, and it's just cool to see guys like that that have done so much in this game that are so humbled and want more in the game. That's great to hear. And the season is not over yet. As Carlos mentioned, you guys are one game out of the wild card. You're also one game out of that second spot in your division. Are you scoreboard watching every night? Are you seeing what the other teams are doing? The Reds have just taken off lately as well. You've got the Cardinals just ahead of you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can get into that scoreboard watching. I think the biggest thing is just controlling what we can control. Um, we play the Cardinals again. We play the Reds again. But, um, you know, if we don't take care of business, you know, tonight and the next two nights, then those games don't mean anything either. So I think it's just taking it day by day, winning one game at a time, and knowing that ahead of us we have, uh, you know, the people that we need to play and beat. All right, thank you for joining us, Daniel. Good luck in the game tonight. Thank you, guys. That feels great. Uh, you know, definitely first time, so I'm excited. 
Uh, you know, the guys rallied today, and uh, we was able to scratch out a win. You know, we got the bats, man. We just got to keep, you know, coming together as a team. You know, we're ready. We're excited. You know, it's just a blessing, man, to be in a position that I'm in. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming, man. You know, this is exciting. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, first time for everything, but we're ready. Yeah, we got the best record, but that ain't that ain't putting no trophies in our pocket. <laughs> uh, that ain't doing anything for us, but, you know, but hopefully we can keep building off the momentum that we have. A lot of emotion, you know, uh, was strike out three times uh, and coming with uh, that hit. Feel so happy, then, then I just let it go. We're really happy, you know, uh, and have Jose uh, around us is, is really good. Just keep working hard like always. Uh, go out and play hard every day. Uh, this is not done yet, and we need to win our division. It's the first step. Um, I, I thought it was a uh, good series to win, so uh, I'm proud of the guys. We still have a lot of baseball to play, but it's, it's a credit to those guys. You know, I feel like we got the best team out there, and, you know, we're going to continue to show it. Uh, you know, like I said, we've had a lot of guys, you know, miss some time. A lot of key guys missed some time, but I think we're getting back to full strength right at the right time, you know, right right down at the end, right at the stretch. So, you know, this is the best time to be hot. You know, it's right going right into the postseason. So let's just continue to keep doing what we're doing and get ready for it. But, you know, the most important games right now are right now. You know, the season's not over, so we got to do what we need to do against Toronto and Boston and then uh, finish strong against Miami. All right, it's time for a little game we like to play called Like or Dislike. And joining me for this game is Tom Verducci. You're going to be calling the game in just a little bit, so thanks for taking the time out to join us. Tom, Stephen Nelson, and J.P. Morosi on the call of the game. But right now, we're going to play a little game. Like or Dislike, you ready? I'm ready. I love games, so let's bring it on. All right. Our first question for you is this 2020 postseason completely different from the expanded postseason. You've got 16 teams. You've got the three best of three wild card round. And no days off for the wild card, the DS, or the LCS in a series. So it's going to be completely different the way that teams manage their pitching staffs, especially like or dislike the new rules. I like it. First of all, I like the expanded field. We already saw that with a team like the Marlins at the trade deadline. They went out and got the best position player available in Starling Marte. That doesn't happen with only five teams in the postseason in each league. So I like the fact it's expanded. You hit on something really important, Heidi. No off days in those first three rounds. I like that because that's a truer test of a team's depth, especially the starting pitching and relief pitching. You can't get by with just three starters and three bullpen guys. It's going to take a whole team to get through that round, especially the LCS, seven days in a row. So I like the fact that this is a much more interesting and unpredictable environment. That, that first round, is that's a trap door for a really good team, that first round. You lose game one, pressure is on, man. <laughs> That first game, you better win that game or else the heat comes early. Yeah, if you're a higher seed and you lose game one and you're facing a team that's got a couple of good pitchers, I, I find it interesting, too. It's going to be a truer test of what the real baseball season, the regular season, is like without the off days. You're not going to have a team like the Nationals that can steamroll it with three great starting pitchers. Nationals had 13 off days last year in a 30 day window to win the World Series. Yeah. So you're right. That was able. They were able to rest their pitchers. Didn't have to go so deep in the rotation or bullpen. Can't do that this year. A road Max Scherzer. That's for sure. Uh, and and uh, uh, Strasburg as well. All right. Like or dislike one NL team currently not in the postseason is going to make the playoffs. Your choices are here. The Cardinals, the Brewers, the Mets and the Rockies. They are just outside of the NL playoffs right now. I like this idea because it it may take an extra day. Maybe the Cardinals have to play those makeup games on the Monday on September the 28th. The Brewers always take their seasons down to the last day of the year, it seems <laughs> like. So they're still going to be in it. But I think the Cardinals are the team for me, Heidi. I think they can grab a spot because when I look at the schedule, I think it's more favorable for the Cardinals than for the other teams that you mentioned. Now, they do have still some more head-to-head -head with Milwaukee. Milwaukee just won three out of five against the Cardinals. Um, but I think the strength of schedule favors the Cardinals here in these last eight, nine days. Yeah, that's the exciting thing about this Brewers team that we're about to watch play the Royals here. I mean, you've got the Brewers, the Reds, the Cardinals all in a dogfight for, for a couple of spots here. Okay, like or dislike, a Chicago team will make the World Series. They're both playing well. Really well. Uh, sorry, Chicago, but I'm going to dislike this one. Oh. And it's not because I dislike the teams. I mean, Pretty she hates Chicago. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big believer in the White Sox. I'm really sold on them. I knew they were going to be good. They're better than I thought. And the bullpen is better than I thought. Starting pitching has been really good. This team is not a fluke. And I think they're going to be a handful for anybody in the postseason. 
And the Cubs, to me, their starting pitching has turned out to be better than I thought, mainly because of you, Darvish. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a coin flip for me. Last year, at the beginning of the season, he looked really bad. He's carried over some of the adjustments he made second half of last year into this year. He's definitely in the Cy Young mix. They actually, their starting pitching has pitched more innings than any team but the Indians. So, to me, the Cubs, when they won in 16, their starting pitching was what really carried them, I think, going deep into games. They could do that. But I happen to really believe in the Rays. That's the only reason I'm not picking the White Sox. And I like the Dodgers a lot in National League. So it's more about their competitors than what I dislike about the two Chicago teams. Tom is sticking with his preseason picks, guys. I am, All right. <laughs> Speaking of the I'm Dodgers, stubborn. yes. A lot of people had Yankees Dodgers in the World Series. Like, why even bother playing this season? These two. But but now, after having been through most of this 60 game stretch, like or dislike that the Yankees or the Dodgers will not make the out sorry, the Yankees and the Dodgers. Both of them. Both of them not making the LCS. I got to dislike that one. Uh, either you just one, said obviously. Dodgers are in the World Series. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tell you the reason why I'm sticking with that is not just because I'm stubborn, Heidi, but because <laughs> the Dodger bullpen to me has been way better than anybody expected. The Kenley Jansen's made some adjustments. He's been good. It's really so deep. And again, we have to go back to this idea of playing if you want to get to the World Series five games in a row in the DS, seven in a row in the LCS. Now you do get two off days in the World Series. So to get through those two rounds to me, I look at depth of bullpen. And the Dodgers bullpen is a deep bullpen. And we, we know their starting pitching has been really good. And that's deep as well. Listen, they're the best team on paper from 1 through 28 on the roster. And I think this year, you have to look at roster depth and not just the stars in the first three starting spots or the first three spots in the bullpen. And I, and I, don't, I don't think there's any team depth-wise that can match the Dodgers. Yeah, and the Yankees have come on strong oh my lately goodness. as well. Yeah. The Bronx Bombers are back, guys. <laughs> In case you haven't been uh, paying attention. All right, let's recap your answers here. Like or dislike you liked the 2020 modified postseason format. Uh, I like it too. It's fun. It's different. It let's fun. see how it goes. Uh, you're liking that one of the Cardinals, Brewers, Mets, or Rockies will make the postseason. Only one of those guys need to make it. You're uh, disliking that a Chicago team will make it to the World Series. Sorry, White Sox and Cubs fans. <laughs> uh, and you are disliking that the Yankees and Dodgers will not make the LCS. I mean, I have a hard time thinking that. One of the two of those, at least, are going to make it to the LCS. Thank you so much for joining us, Tom. This is fun. We'll let you go get ready for the game now. Thanks, Heidi. All right. All right, let's take a look at some of the scores from games that have happened earlier today. Uh, the Cardinals Pirates playing a doubleheader. Cardinals took the game one by a score of six to five. The Cardinals, get this, they avoid falling three games below 500 with the win. They've been within two games of the 500 mark every single day this season. Pretty crazy, right? And the Pirates, they've lost nine of Trevor Williams' 10 starts this season. Not great. Game two getting underway shortly here for them. The Phillies and Blue Jays. Uh, Phillies won seven nothing in the first game. Zach Eflin, a four hit shutout, his third career shutout. He's been great. And looking ahead, the Phillies are 0-6 in second games of double headers this season. It's a very 2020 niche stat, but it is interesting to note. Phillies do have a 1-0 lead over the Blue Jays, though, in the top of the second of that game, too. The Nationals beat the Marlins 5-0. And get this, they got to Sixto Sanchez, who has been so good for Miami this year. He had a 1.69 ERA. Uh, entering this start through his first five big league starts, but he gave up five runs in four innings in this outing today as the Nationals took game one. Game two will be getting underway shortly there in uh, South Florida. The Braves already have a 5 nothing lead over the Mets in the bottom of the second inning. This is a big one for the Mets because they are just outside of that NL playoff picture and fighting to get in. They need every win they can get, but they're going up against Max Fried, who is off the I.L. for the Braves and he's been so good so that's going to be a tough one from them but taking a look at this NL postseason picture you can see the Mets there two games out of a wild card spot right now and there is a bunch of teams kind of bunched in there for that wild card and also for the NL Central Carlos what do you think about this NL postseason picture who do you think I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Tom Verducci a couple minutes ago here which of these teams that are just outside of the bubble do you think has the best shot of making it into the postseason well, Heidi, I love this setup, by the way. Everyone's got a shot. That's awesome when you show up to the ballpark as a player. But I got to say that the Milwaukee Brewers, the way they've been playing as of late, they are looking pretty good, but they have to execute. Every game matter, it matters. Every single pitch matters. You better bring it. 
Yeah, and we see Christian Yelich here. He's actually heated up over the last couple of weeks here. Over the last week especially, he's played a lot better. And these games against the Royals, we said it earlier, they really need to take advantage of teams not in the postseason hunt. They need to win at least two of three in this series this weekend. Right, Carlos? No, no doubt about it. You see Christian Yelich right there, one of the purest swings in the game. If he gets going, and it just helps the Brewers so much. So they're waiting for him to get that hot bat, you know, contributing the way they're going to cost them to. All right, so we're going to send it over to Steven Nelson, Tom Verducci, and J.P. Morosi for the game. Enjoy it. Milwaukee and Kansas City. What are you thinking about? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Brats, barbecue, and baseball. And as this unique 2020 season comes down the stretch, there's a lot to play for. Postseason bursts are at stake. Seating still undecided. We're going to figure some of that out in this MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube inside Miller Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's the Milwaukee Brewers and the Kansas City Royals inside our baseball heaven at the MLB Network Studio, Studio 42, alongside Tom Verducci. I am Steven Nelson. Now, Tom, if people are true to this, they kind of know what's going on, the Game of the Week live on YouTube. If you're new, let us explain. Okay, join the more than 2.5 million other fans subscribing to the MLB YouTube channel around the globe, and you get to watch live baseball on this channel for free, like waffle fries. We got one more game coming up on the 25th of September up in the Twin Cities. And you click the bell icon, that gives you notifications. So in case you forget there's a game going on, ding, bell rings, and you know where to go. And if you're on YouTube TV, you can also get the pop up. Dude, how excited are you for this one? Because listen, while Kansas City may not be a huge factor down the stretch in the postseason race, one, they're playing well, and now they're facing a team in Milwaukee that, despite its struggles, is still right there. I got my notifications on. You know why? <laughs> yes. This is the next yeah. best thing to actual postseason baseball because we're in a window now where it's do or die, right? Mm -hmm. The Brewers have 11 games in the next 10 days. And now we'll decide whether they can get back to the postseason the third time. Problem is that offense. 225 team batting average, the lowest in Brewers history. And yeah, there's a lot of swing and miss in this lineup. So for me, Milwaukee is not a great rally team. They've got to beat you with the big boppers, the home runs from Braun, Hera, and Yelich. That's really the, the opportunity for the Brewers to get through these next 10 days is to go yard, and especially the two big guys, Yelich and Hera. You saw what they did last year. They did have support around them in the lineup, but not so much this year. So again, this is a Milwaukee team that is not going to put together three, four hits and score runs, but they do have a home run power. And that's why this expanded postseason format is so exciting that despite everything that Milwaukee's been through, all these valleys offensively still just right outside the postseason picture with an awesome chance to get in. On the other side, Kansas City won seven of its last eight games. First time they won seven in an eight-game stretch in two years. They're an exciting team. There's no question. They're a dangerous team right now, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, seven of the last ten. They're dangerous in part because a talent like Adalberto Mondesi, my goodness, this guy has the kind of skills that scouts just love to see. Now, he's turned it around. That's a big part of the Royals' turnaround. Last two weeks, he's been on fire with a really incredible combination of power and speed. And when I say incredible, well, StatCast, powered by Google Cloud, can really show us the combo that not a lot of players have. We're talking about a guy here from the left side. What kind of power? Check out this bomb to right field. 458 feet. Now, normally, if you're a guy who can hit the ball that far, you can't run, right? Well, this guy is as fast as there is down the line. He puts tremendous pressure, not just on infielders, that clock in your head speeds up, but how about on outfielders? Really impressed by this hustle double. Sprint speed there, you see a 30.5. Anything above 30 is super elite. And that's a good way to describe Adalberto Mondesi. He, is, he wants to join this class of premier shortstops in the game. I call it the golden age of shortstops. Yes. And he could be right there.
power, speed, talent. There's a lot of that for both Adrian Hauser and Danny Duffy, the starting pitchers today, to navigate through on both sides of this meeting. Hey, Tom Verducci and I are not alone. We have you, of course, but we also have our very good friend and third member of our broadcast team inside Miller Park, J.P. Morosi. J.P., what's up, my friend? Thank you, Stephen. The National League playoff picture has changed a bit already today with Philadelphia's win over Toronto. Milwaukee is now a game and a half back of the Phillies for the second and final National League wildcard spot. But if you ask the Brewers, they are focused entirely on their own division because they can now clear up some ground, close some ground on the second place team there, the Cincinnati Reds. Just a game behind the Reds and actually the entire last week of their season, three games against the Reds and five against the Cardinals. The Brewers with a chance to directly win that playoff spot head to head against their divisional foes in the days ahead. Tonight's series opener against the Royals. Here's your pitching matchup. Adrian Hauser for the Brewers. Danny Duffy for the Kansas City Royals. Hauser relies on his sinker and therefore his defense a lot. It's been supported recently by a lot of power from Ryan Braun. Braun, the veteran, batting 367 in the month of September. Kiefer Hauser that the Brewers had an off day yesterday. That dynamic bullpen, Josh Hader, Devin Williams, both available probably for multiple outs here on Friday evening. With the Royals, Danny Duffy actually missed the team's flight to begin this road trip. He had his start pushed back, but he gets the ball tonight with three players from that 2015 Royals team in the lineup as well. Alex Gordon, Salvador Perez, and Adalberto Mondesi. He opposes a Brewers lineup that's been a little mer mercurial of late. In the last 10 games alone, the Brewers have scored 19 runs, 18 runs, and also, Ben, no hit. Steven, you never quite know what to expect here in Milwaukee. Oh, uh, that's baseball, and that's why we love it, JP. Thank you so much. We're going to come back with lineups and first pitch in a bit. But first, it's a little something to get you going for KC in Milwaukee. Duke it out. Emmy, are you ready? Here in Milwaukee, it is a beautiful night for a baseball game. Now we fully charged, now we ready to go. We gonna take it higher. That ball is lifted. And it is gone. This is a no doubt about her. Back to back bombs by Soler and Perez. Braun rips one down the left field line. And the Brewers have tied it in the ninth. Line down the left field line. That's gonna get down. And the Brewers have a 6 to 5 lead here in the 11. Big Friday, big Saturday, big Sunday, big Monday. Josh Hader comes in, goes 3 up and 3 down through the White Sox barricades in the first inning of 2020 for Brad Kelly. 2 2 coming. Got him. He strikes out the side, and Devin Williams with a clean eighth inning. Middle diving stop. Oh my goodness. Back up the middle. Oh, nice stop. Arias. I'm still sitting here in shock. That's his seventh K of the night. Wow. And the Royals have erupted here. Man, Preston here I just clobbered that ball. Whit Merrifield has led the majors in hits each of the last two seasons. On the ground. Through. That's a beautiful job. There's a fly ball hit back into right field. It's deep. It is gone. And the Brewers win it. Aaron Sogard lost it Yeah, I think I'm ready for some baseball. It's the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Mr. Baseball, Bob Euchre. On the wall, the Brewers Hall of Fame. So many greats come through that franchise in Milwaukee, home of Miller Park, and the site of tonight's game against the Kansas City Royals. Throwing the first pitch today for the crew, Adrian Hauser, 27 year old righty from Oklahoma, former second round pick, trying to find the form, Tom, that he showed his first couple outings this year. Yeah, the first two were really good. He's got to get back there. And the way he does that is by throwing a lot of fastballs. About two-thirds of his pitches are going to be fastballs. 
netcast powered by Google Cloud will show us graphically. Pay attention to that orange line right there. That's the sinker. And he will eat up right-handed hitters on the inside half of the plate. Right-handed hitters, get this, are hitting 122 against Hauser's sinker. So that is a power sinker at 94-95. That's not just get a ground ball. That is a swing and miss pitch when he gets it inside. And here is the lineup he'll face. He'll start with Hit Merrifield, Adalberto Mondesi, and Salvador Perez, and Salvi. Boy, is he been smoking at the plate. Five-game hitting streak, 11 for 21. He's on a tear. And again, you see the right-handed hitters at the top of the lineup for Hauser. Very interesting. I would circle Merrifield and Franco as the two right-handed hitters who match up a little bit better against Hauser. Why? Because they handle the ball in. They're pull hitters, and they can get the bat out front. No Jorge Soler for the Royals as he's trying to work his way back to complete health for the home stretch. But you see some of the pieces in that lineup and in the pitching staff, which has a ton of youth, that has the Royals organization and KC fans excited for next year and beyond. They've won seven of eight entering play tonight. Milwaukee and the Royals underway at Miller Park with Tom Verducci and J.P. Morosi on location in Milwaukee. I'm Stephen Nelson. Thanks for tuning in here. And we'll be Game of the Week live on YouTube. We already see the live commentary mode is uh, filled with action and we got action right away. Whit Merrifield not wasting any time getting on the base pass. Well, that's exactly what I had penciled in for Whit. You know, he does use the whole field, but early in counts, he looks for the ball in, and that's what you have to do on Hauser. His 16th hit in the first inning this year. Only Tim Anderson of the Chicago White Sox has more with 17. And he can run a bit too. If you're not aware, you might find out here. Honestly, he shows bump, pulls back, bounces away from Nottingham, and Merrifield doesn't have to use much speed, just trots into second base. It just overthrew the curveball, usually first pitch curveball. That's designed as a get me over pitch. Spike grip on it, just overthrew it. Really nothing Nottingham could do on a pitch that bounced in front of the plate. That's a long hop. So Merrifield in scoring position for Mondesi. Shows Bunn again. Bounces it off the plate. For strike number one. I'd like to see Mondesi actually bunt for a hit here. Not give himself up entirely in a pure sacrifice situation. Again, he's so fast out of the box, he puts tremendous pressure on infielders to handle the ball cleanly. And again, as you highlighted in our open, Tom, he's been swinging it well. Four home runs, 11 ribbies, his last 12 games played. That stat line that was just on the screen, that's his total season. Doesn't really illustrate how he's playing right now. Strike two as he pulled Bunt back again. And there's some guys who are just not comfortable squaring around fully in sacrifice mode. He didn't look comfortable to me. Ricky Henderson was one of those guys. Much better off bunting for a hit than sacrificing. Tied for fifth in bunts this year. Only was six for KC. One, two, swinging away. Fouls it off to stay alive. Hammering home how he's heating up the last dozen or so games, getting no homers in just three ribbies, his first 37 games. Much different player starting to find himself again. Holds off on ball two that was high. Well, even with two strikes here, Mondesi has to try to get the ball to the right side of the field. Get Merrifield over to third for that guy, Sal Perez, with less than two outs. Hauser checks back on Merrifield and goes home. Foul back and out of play. We'll do a 2 2 again. And he had the perfect pitch to get him over. That's the slider from Hauser that got really, it was designed to be back door, but got too much of the plate. Mondesi just missed it. A little bit under it.
Alzer buries one in the dirt. Nottingham keeps it in front of him, but we're full now. Well, if I'm Hauser, I'm sticking with my best pitch right here. And that's the sinker. To arm side, down and away to Mondesi. There he goes, but misses with ball four. First two batters reaching for KC. And Salvador Perez salivating with this opportunity. A little bit too defensive for me, Steven. Hauser in that at bat. You know, not sticking with his go to pitch. Needs to get into attack mode right here at a very aggressive hitter. First pitch to Perez misses inside. Came off the injured list just a few days ago on the 11th of the month after missing 22 games, had an eye infection, and since that return, at a 524 clip with a couple of dingers in six steak sandwiches. Multiple hits in all five games. A hit here would give KC a lead. Takes ball two. And both those pitches to me just non competitive. Perez is a guy I know he's hitting for an incredible average this year. A lot of people talked about him being more disciplined. That's not the case. Career high swing rate for Salvador Perez. Believe me, he does not concede strikes. This pitch is in the zone. He's he's green lighting it. Anxious times here in the first for Craig Council and his starter Hauser. 2 1 pitch hack foul. So Perez, you got to know him as being one of the most durable and top notch backstops in all of baseball. But the last few years, Tommy's he's really been fighting the injury bug. Yeah, I mean, Tommy John surgery, that blurred vision was a little concerning. He missed a couple of weeks. Got that cleared up. He had some fluid in there, but he's been on fire since he got back from the I.L. Let's not forget six time all star five time gold glove award winner 2 1. And the pitch foul off his leg, but he looks to be all right. And now we're level at two and two. Now that's the go to pitch. Those last two. That's when Hauser's on. You're going to see a lot of foul balls and swings and misses down and into right handed hitters. Hauser has one he likes from Nottingham. Pitch number 15 of the first, the 2 2. Lifted into right center field. That finds the fairway in the gap. Merrifield rounds third, will trot home. Monesey turning on the burners. He'll score. 2 0 Royals. Again, Hauser went away from his strength. Tried to get outside. Perez with a slider. Was it nearly out enough? There's not much tilt to it. It's too good of a hitter to leave that pitch there. And with Mondesi running, we talked about the pressure he puts on outfielders, not just infielders. It took a while to return his ball to the infield. Just too long to get a man that fast. The better sprint speeds in all of baseball for Mondesi. A little taste there, but stay scorching Salvi. And still nobody away here in the top of the first inning. Michael Franco, designated hitter for Mike Matheny's club tonight. Perfect placement from Hauser. Michael Franco's like, okay, all right. He's behind 0 and 2. Hauser comes home. Trying to get Franco to chase. He does not. Hasn't really broken off a good slider yet. Either not a strike ball type slider or anything with a good tilt to it. Should be going back to that two seamer in right here. Bronco hits it well, but it stays in the air for Braun to make the catch for round number one. First baseman, number 17, Hunter Dozier. 
Showing you the defensive alignment for the Brewers. Yelich, Taylor, and Braun in the outfield. Jerko, Hyota, Arcia, and Urias around the horn with Hauser and Nottingham playing catch. Todd Titchener behind home plate, calling balls and strikes. John Bacon at first, Chris Siegel at second, Eric Backus at third. Hunter Dozier, first baseman for KC, takes ball one inside. He's one of six first round picks on the Royals roster. He's trying to get going. Bottom of the zone, strike one. And Steven, it's a good example of why, you know, first round picks aren't always ready made stars. You know, not everybody gets microwaved yeah. to be, being a big league star. Sometimes you have to be patient, even with the first round ones. And that's the case with Hunter Dozier. When I like what I've seen of him this year, especially, he does exactly what you want to see with a young hitter. He's increased his walk rate and he's reduced his strikeout rate. There's the walk rate at the bottom, 15.8 this season. Staring at a 1 1 count. On the button, up the middle, base hit for Hunter Dozier. Perez will hold it third, runners at the corners. Hauser just cannot find that slider. That's a changeup right there that just stayed up as well. Off the end of the bat. But Dozier does a nice job keeping his hands back. <laughs> Duck and cover. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure how necessary, but I loved it. <laughs> Perez, one of the more lovable players in all of Major League Baseball. Plays with so much passion, yeah. doesn't he? You got to love it. And a veteran on this team just like this man, Alex Gordon. And if you want to talk gold gloves like Salvi's five. This man has seven and he takes strike one. Long time left fielder for KC. Out of that World Series championship team a handful of seasons ago. And he's been swinging it well. 320 average and 414 on base percentage in his last 14 games. Turning things around after a slow start. A real good hitter on anything middle in. I try to keep the ball away from Alex Gordon. One hung up there in the zone, but he couldn't do anything with it. And the reason why I say that, Alex is a guy who likes to hit the ball out front. And this is what he's done throughout his career. Number two overall pick. That's the definition of a franchise player, right? You take a guy in the second, in the second overall pick, and he wins a World Series with you, and wears the uniform the whole time. A lot of hardware. Behind one, two, spits on it. Two and two now. He's been around such a long time, such an accomplished career for Gordon. Another look at that breaking ball that missed inside. Knows how to come through in situations like this. Runners in scoring position, less than two outs. When he's up there like that, runner on third, four out of six times he brings the runner home. Alex Gordon. Ball down, runner going out to second base. Throw gets away. And Salvador Perez will touch home plate. Three nothing Kansas City. Love the aggressiveness right here. First and third situation. Definitely thrown down the second with Perez at third, but ball short hops second base. It's a tough block for Urias, but you have to actually turn into a catcher yourself as a middle infielder right there with the runner on third base. Do anything you can to smother that ball knowing that you did not have the out in order. And a rough start from Milwaukee.
course, with Ned Yost was the manager of the Royals. They were always aggressive on the base pass, getting after it. Has not changed with Mike Matheny taking over here. And there's a walk. Alex Gordon. Most stolen bases in baseball since the beginning of 2018. And they're making Adrian Hauser work and Craig Council consider. Even with the mask on, you can see the concern on his face. Again, they're facing 11 games in 10 days. And he talked to us today about the need for really good starting pitching. You can't win all these games with, as bullpen games. Brewers already down 3 0. This is a team that has scored two or fewer runs in six of their last eight games. Of course, the other two they erupted, including the last time they were on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Chopper up the middle, stepping on second, throwing the first. Here's Arcia. And they are finally done with the top of the first inning, but a crooked number up on the board for the road squad. So now it's on Avi Garcia, Christian Yelich, and Ryan Braun to spark a party in the bottom half. Here's Salvador Perez. It doesn't matter how long his layoff is when he comes back. It's like he hasn't missed a day. Salvi turns on it and hits it into the corner and gone. Number six for Salvi, and he just keeps on hitting since coming back. And the Royals lead 2-0. Ooh, man. The Salvi was sitting on a fastball, and he got one where he liked it. And a runner at second with one out. Salvi. Drives it to the gap in right center field, and this time the Tigers will not run that one down. So Salvi has a double, he has an RBI, and the Royals take a 3 0 lead in the sixth inning. And now Salvador Perez is hitting over 500 since coming back from the injured list. Oh, come on, Salvi, you're making it look easy. Brady Singer, six innings, no runs, two hits, eight strikeouts, one walk, 81 pitches. He was brilliant tonight. 81 pitches, 58 of them for strikes. It's 4 0. Two outs in the ninth. And here's Miguel Cabrera. And that will do it. So the Royals are shut out last night. They shut out the Tigers tonight. Whit Merrifield scored twice. Salvador Perez drove in three. Welcome back to Miller Park in the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. It's the Kansas City Royals and Milwaukee Brewers. The crew already down 3 0. Let's show you their lineup. Avi Garcia leading off in front of Christian Yelich and Ryan Braun, one of the all time greats in the history of the Brewers franchise, Tom Perducci. Well, and as his manager, Craig Council, said, he loves the big games and he's been turning it up in September. We've seen that before from Ryan Braun. Jerko, Huda, Taylor, Garcia. Gurias and Nottingham rounding out the order for Craig Council's club. Avi Garcia against Danny Duffy, the quote-unquote old guy in the Royals rotation. Yeah, well, when they go out to dinner, he's the one who has to pick up the tab. We know that. <laughs> so that qualifies both seniority and salary. Five-pitch guy, primarily his best pitch, there's no question. Four-seam fastball. Using it a little bit less. There it is right there. But when he has command of that four seamer, that's when he's tough to beat. He gets in trouble, like a lot of pitchers with real good velocity and life on the fastball when he gets behind hitters. But this is a matchup. You can circle this one. Garcia, career 342 hitter against Danny Duffy. A lot of experience from his days with the Chicago White Sox. Garcia fouls away the 1 1, now behind 1 and 2. Has 13 hits off Duffy, matches the most hits he has against any one pitcher that he's faced. Also, has touched up Rich Brick Porcello 13 times in his career.
Lays off the one two. Career numbers that'll play. <laughs> Garcia extends on it, but just this little soft looper over to Dozier at first base. Actually, good athleticism by Dozier to get over there like that. Really got into his kitchen with a good hard slider right there. Well, let's see if Danny Duffy remembers how to pitch the left-handed hitters. He's faced 78 consecutive right-handed hitters. Until Christian Yelich steps in the box right here. It's the second longest streak in the majors this year. Rich Hill had 80 straight righties. Christian Yelich takes ball one, the 2018 National League MVP in 2019. MVP runner up in a very close vote behind Cody Bellinger. Has not been his year in 2020. Turns on the 1 0 pitch. Sends it into right field for a one-out base hit, though. You talked to Craig Council in our pregame meeting about where he's at based on what you've seen recently, especially against that, in that Cardinals series. What does that base hit tell you, if anything, Tom? Yeah, well, I love the balance there. To me, when Christian Yelich is right, he has the best balance just about any hitter in baseball. When he was going really poorly, let's face it, the first five, six weeks, he was drifting out. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but as Council told us, he's been much better against fastballs lately, and that's a good indication right there, getting on Duffy's heater. Y'all are just crushing lefties this year. That hasn't been the issue. He's just batting 174, though, against righties. Ryan Braun offers at the first pitch from Duffy, fouls it back. Well, that was a little bit of a tentative swing right there. It looked like Braun. I don't know whether he tweaked something right there. But he wasn't able to really finish the swing. A little bit of a grimace. An offensive storyline for the Brewers tonight is this man, Ryan Braun. He's homered in back-to-back -back games. Hasn't homered in three straight since August of 2012. That's not a home run, but it is a base hit. So back-to-back -back knocks by Milwaukee as they try and claw back here in the bottom of the first inning after giving up a three spot. I think he felt something on that, that last swing. Obviously, he's a really good one, but you saw him jog down to first base. Yeah, there's something that he tweaked right there in that pitch before that one. He's, he's clearly not right right now, but you know he's not going to want to come out of this game. Not with the Brewers a game and a half back of a postseason spot. Swing and a miss. From Jed Jerko. A really good high fastball hitter. That's Duffy's strength. So he started with the changeup right there. Might show Jerko more two seamers rather than four seamers up. The only one to Jerko he lays off. Here's that swing I talked about in that foul ball from Braun. Let's see the reaction after this. It's like, oops, something doesn't quite feel right. <sighs> 36 years old, Ryan Braun. Jerko rolls over on the 1-1 pitch over to short. And they turn two. They do. So Duffy gets the ground ball he wanted to escape. A first and second jam at the bottom of the first and preserve a 3 nothing KC lead. We're going to the second. No balls, two strikes to Keston Hira. And there's a drive deep left field. And that is gone. A no-doubter for Keston Hira as the Brewers grab an early 2-0 lead. Tyler O'Neill hitting 189. Five homers. He's driven in 13. 
And O'Neal lifts a high fly ball into deep right center field at the wall. Goodbye. That is a long home run into right center field. Tyler O'Neal. It's a runner at third infield in, and here's Tommy Edmond. The 0-2 pitch. Hits it the other way. That's a base hit. The Cardinals have the lead. Bader will score. 3-2 St. Louis. Here's Brad Miller. And a bloop double back in the fourth. And he hits one a ton. In the center. At the wall. Gone. Brad Miller. So Adam Wainwright will try to finish this one off. Eye level changing all over the place in that at bat. Eight strikeouts. Adam Wainwright. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Unbelievable. Adam Wainwright goes the distance. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Two more of these before the regular season comes to a close in this unique and, yeah, very weird 2020 season. But we're watching baseball together, wherever you may be. Thank you for watching with us. Tom Verducci and J.P. Morosi. I'm Stephen Elson. Adrian Hauser, he had to work in that first inning, Tom Verducci. Well, 30 pitches, but if I'm Craig Council, I talk to him after the inning and say, that last pitch you threw to O'Hearn, that's the pitch you have to throw. Fastball, fastball. Be more aggressive with your fastball. I thought he was a little too passive with the secondary stuff using that in key spots. He's got to be on the aggressive. Edward Olivares, the number eight hitter. And center fielder tonight for Kansas City, leading off the second. Came over from San Diego in the pre deadline deal that sent Trevor Rosenthal from the Royals bullpen to slam Diego is behind one and two is it safely in eight of twelve games since that trade chops the one two back to Hauser he's got to pick it up and throw it and he retires Olivar is who's hustling down the line so one away we have the live game commentary going on the YouTube stream right now. I'm I'm keeping track of it. If there's any interesting nuggets, good conversation starters, I'll relay them to you. Featuring MLB, Royals, and Brewers YouTube channels and a select group of YouTube content creators. Now the bottom of the order, Nikki Lopez. Lopez averaged in September. Shade under 300, 289. Sitting 191 entering the month. Kansas City, listen, only a handful of games back of a postseason spot. Problem is, they have a ton of teams in front of them that they have to leapfrog. But I don't even think that's the focus for Mike Matheny's club. On this run, 7 and 1, last eight games. It's about getting that ball rolling towards 2021. Because this, this is an organization that feels that it's close. Well, Stephen, the way a team that is not playoff bound finishes the year, that's important to me. I think it says a lot about the manager, the culture he's created, and the players that he has. So for Kansas City to be playing this well at the end of a, I think, a non playoff season, that speaks volumes. This team's getting after it. Mike Matheny in year number one, wearing royal blue, of course. You know, he's, he's a fan of a different kind of blue these days. Um, but longtime Redbirds manager. He's on the other side of that in state rivalry. And you've noticed Hauser coming back this inning. Every pitch but one has been a fastball. So I got to believe there was a conversation in that Milwaukee dugout about being on the attack. Three two to Lopez gets the bottom of the zone. He knew it. First strikeout of the game for Adrian Hauser. Let's check in with our boy JP Morosi, who's on location at Miller Park. What do you got for us, JP? 
Well, Stephen, I, I was loving the conversation that Tom pointed out about how the Royals have really evolved and gotten better. But the standard, as you know, right now in the AL Central, the White Sox and yeah. how quickly they have evolved and developed into a really strong team. You think about how young they are. Luis Robert arriving as a rookie. They've got a chance to be a very strong team for a very long time right now. Of course, a three way race for a long time in the AL Central. Certainly, I'm geographically biased here, Stephen, <laughs> but that might be the best division in baseball right now. I'm biased, too. I, I'll admit that. Lifelong Chicago White Sox fan. It's been a fun year, not just for the Pale Hills, though, but as you point out, JP, and thank you for that report, the entire central time zone, <laughs> both the American and National League, especially the AL, as Merrifield fouls the 0 2 pitch back. Right now, the White Sox, the one seed in the AL, Tom, clinched a postseason berth for the first time in 12 years, but still much to be determined. You know, Minnesota. Cleveland has fallen off a little bit of late. And Detroit and Kansas City at different times this year has shown that they're not a cupcake. Back to back strikeouts for Adrian Hauser to end the second of the inning. It's still 3 0 Kansas City going to the bottom half here on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Hit by pitch and a walk ahead of Ryan Braun. Uh oh. And there's a shot into left field. He hit it well, and there's home run number 350 for Ryan Braun. Well, he's heating up, isn't he? Seems like every year about this time he starts to take over. Two strike pitch to Jerko. And it's hit in the air to left field. Tyler O'Neill at the track. Plenty deep enough for Hero, so a sack fly for Jerko. One away with RC of the runner at first. Here's Jacob Nottingham. Walls two strikes to Jacob Nottingham. And there's a drive, left field, and gone for Jacob Nottingham. Sends one over the wall and left, and it's 6 0 Brew Crew. And five of the six runs coming via the long ball. Brewers pitching, surrendering just two hits in this game and nothing since the third inning. A ball is strike to Justin Williams and in the air to left field. Yelich is there, and the Brewers take three out of five from the St. Louis Cardinals. They get a split in the doubleheader. We're back with the MLB game of the week live on YouTube from Miller Park in Milwaukee Wisconsin the Brewers and Royals duking it out down the stretch the crew fighting for a postseason spot in the National League and Tom Verducci we have some company what do we have well we have a Brewers pitcher slash part time gymnast. And Brent Suter, the Raptor, joins us on headset. <laughs> Brent, thanks for doing this. You know that's where I'm starting. The Suter salt yeah. <laughs> that had Simone Biles' attention on social media. All right. <laughs> I, I had a feeling you were going to start with that. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a one-of-a-kind, once-in-a-lifetime moment, I guess. Khalid just slipped on me on the rubber. And uh, I've, I've never felt as unathletic as going uh, somersaulting back there. But... <laughs> Try to redeem myself at the end, but it was uh, it was already too late. <laughs> well, I hear you pitch a little bit too, Brent. So <laughs> let me ask you how you feel after coming doing all that work to get back from surgery. Yeah, I feel great. Um, really, the uh, the stuff and command have been uh, pleasant surprises on how quickly they came back last year and this year. Uh, my the rehab team in Cincinnati and Arizona were awesome, as were the trainers here. So got to them give them a ton of credit for uh, all the hard work they put in and. Um, it rehab was as smooth as it could go uh, every step we we cleared the hurdles uh, just when we needed to and we were able to get back in a big league mound about 13 months after surgery which is uh, really what we were shooting for so very grateful for uh, still being able to play this awesome game and uh, to be healthy again. It's a 2 2 count now to Kesson Huda the second baseman leading off in the second inning for Milwaukee now Brent I'm curious can you tell us a little bit about the dynamic of a clubhouse down the stretch here when maybe individually you're not having the years certain players certain stars that you would want in a season but you still find yourselves right there on the cusp of a postseason. Yeah um, it really becomes 
even if guys are doing well, it becomes all about um, just winning that game. It's I know it's always like that, but the, just that attitude is heightened of just like whatever we need to do, whatever your job is today and what you need to do to win. Let's do it. Um, so it becomes a really, really cool, cohesive energy. Um, and we've we've done a really good job of it here the last couple of years of just down the stretch, really bonding together and uh, coalescing in a way that really gets us uh, to where we want to be uh, in terms of a stretch run. But uh, it's it's time uh, this year. This is really kind of the start of that final stretch um, the, of 11 games left and we're, we got a chance. So that's all we can ask for. So just that that awesome energy of just coming together and uh, every, everyone being for the greater good is awesome. Hey, Brent, is it true that you're the catch partner of Devin Williams? It is true. Uh, that's a dangerous um, job. To, <laughs> he doesn't throw anything that straight. No, it is. It's not. It's not fun necessarily, but it is uh, very enlightening. And I just like seeing his change up. I feel every day has allowed me to become better. I tried to throw my change up like his uh, for like two straight months. It seemed like and I just could not like it just wasn't doing it. It's like a, it's a God given thing for him. So I just had to kind of manipulate mine in a in a way that would move a little bit. So him, him playing catch with me really helps my change up just like to see how he how he throws it um, and to see the movement on it and to kind of like I try to catch that movement a little bit or catch the feel of it. But uh, it, it's incredible what he does. Couple strikeouts for Danny Duffy here to start off the second getting Taylor there with Brent Suter of the Milwaukee Brewers who's back healthy and joining us now kind enough to join us here on the only game of the week live on YouTube now Brent I, I probably buried the lead here I, I do want to get your take because you're not only a major league player you're one of the great ambassadors for this game in a year where people are being forced to reckon with the fact that you are, are more than athletes. Right. And the Milwaukee right. Brewers have been at the forefront of the important conversations, the uncomfortable conversations surrounding racial equality mm -hmm. and social justice in America. Why has that been on your heart weighing so heavily? Uh, it really started um, in quarantine. You know, uh, the George Floyd uh, incident was certainly a, a kind of a spawn for a lot of our team to really start having these tough conversations. And uh, we came into summer camp and we wanted to get a campaign going and get get a team mission going of let's let's be part of the solution. Let's be part of the change that we want to see. So, you know, our justice equality now uh, mission is something that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we want people talking about it, but more importantly, we want people to listen, have empathy and then act and be uh, be the change they want to see in terms of helping marginalized communities, helping helping people that uh, look different than them, that came from a different background and just breaking down those divisions that are so they're invisible, but they're very apparent in our nation and trying to make sure we're part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Can't end it any better than that. Brent Suter of the Milwaukee Brewers here taking some time in the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Thank you so much, Brent. Best of luck and best of health down the stretch. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Danny Duffy struck out the side in the second. Three Ks, it's 3 nothing Royals. Stick with us. Mondesi and Mondesi hits it a mile into right field and that is gone up into the concourse. How about that for a first home run of the year? I think this would be a good guy to run on. Oh, for sure. And there he goes and Mondesi is in there and he stays on the bag. Leads the world in steals this year. We knew he would. And Mondesi blasts it into deep left field and that is gone. Wow. Where did that come from? Mondesi goes, pitch is taken, throw to third, safe. Puts his head down, doesn't peek in to see what the hitter did. No problem. Oh, and let's just do a repeat. Look at this. He has suddenly gotten hot, and Adalberto Mondesi has three home runs this week. Go ball. That ball is carrying. Yes! And it is a goner. A home run by Adalberto Mondesi, his fourth this week. Mondesi all of a sudden carrying the team on his shoulders. Mondesi goes, pitch in the dirt, and he's done it. That's three straight games with a stolen base and a home run for Adalberto Mondesi.
inside Miller Park for our MLB game of the week live on YouTube. We have interactive polls. We're going to fire one up right now, shall we? Live game commentary. You can check that out. The poll question is up. Select your responses from four options. Question is, which team is going to grab the second wild card spot in the National League? A, the Phillies, Tom Verducci. B, the Cardinals. C, the Brewers. D, the Mets. You know what? If, if you're watching right now in the commentary, you can give us an E answer. Oh, yeah. If you're a Rockies fan, <laughs> you're like, what about us? What about us? Let us know. What do you think? Right, right now. Right now, I would say Cardinals. I, I think the schedule benefits them. They may have to play that doubleheader on Monday against Detroit to get in. Mm. The Cardinals and Brewers have five more games left, and that could decide a lot. And Alberto Mondesi, the number two hitter and shortstop. Get Kansas City going here in the third inning with Tom Verducci and JP Morosi on location at Miller Park. I'm Steven Elson. Mondesi pulls the 2 1 pitch into right field. Lead off base hit. As he goes to second base, as the ball was slow to get back in from Ryan Braun in right, you can't give a player like that extra bases. No, give Mondesi credit. We're keeping his head up, and taking nothing for granted. I mean, 99 times out of 100, you know, the ball's returned cleanly to the infield. But do you respond on the one time it's mishandled? And again, we saw Braun before just looked like something was bothering him, and he just flipped that ball in indiscriminately without purpose. Very strange. All right, Salvador Perez at a two run double in the first inning. Up again with a runner in scoring position. Antonelli baseball in the commentary section. Heads up base running right there. Yes, it was. Those little things, any young ball players out there, they make a huge impact over the course of a game. Perez breaks the bat, goes into left center field. Mondesi going to turn home. 4 0 KC. And Salvador Perez, you cannot stop him right now. Third baseman, number seven. Even when he breaks his bat, it's just everything's falling for him. This is a good two seamer, but Perez just muscles it. And even though Mondesi had to wait to see if Arcia could get to that line drive, he had plenty of time to score easily. So that misplay by Braun really hurt. Just off the inside, third of the plate, ball one. So another look at Mondesi's hit into right field. Braun, who again, we showed you in the first, his first swing, it looked uncomfortable. Lazy throw back into the infield to nobody. Yeah, I, I can't even begin to explain that, why he would throw the ball like that. Now, I will say he did look like he was still bothered by something out there, just didn't seem loose and athletic, but he had plenty of time to get that ball in just throw it to the second baseman and he just lobbed it in clearly not right Ryan Braun I'm but not sure how the, why that would affect his throw I, I, though no, no question I'm not I agree making with excuses you. I, I think there's something you know lower half that's bothering him but that doesn't affect between their ears it's just a lapse in focus from the veteran right fielder so now the Royals up to nothing. And a part of that deficit is. Due to mistakes in the field a throw from Nottingham got away went into center field out to run the score and then that one from Ryan Braun putting a runner in scoring position for Salvador Perez one of the hottest hitters in baseball right now. See Craig Council's teams have been among the best teams in the National League in September. Every year since he's been there. But for a team that is hitting 225, you better play a clean game. You know, those 19 nothing wins are few and far between.
Franco has been quite a fine for KC. After coming up with the Phillies. Signed a one year pack with the Royals. And Salvador Perez. I see you Salvi. Takes second base. Well listen we we knew the Royals are aggressive on the base paths. But I don't think any of us anybody of any of us excuse me expected Salvi to be the one. Well you can see he's, he's not being held on at all. And I'm not sure why Jerko wasn't holding him on because Franco is not an opposite field hitter. You can hold him on when you have a pull right handed hitter at the plate. That's fair picked up going down to third heads up play by Nottingham to get the lead runner in Perez. Sal got carried away with that stolen base. <laughs> he was he was feeling start, himself. He started thinking he was Mondesi. Uh. And reality came back into play. Nottingham does a nice job jumping on, the, on this and he knows where his out is. But right now I mean the Brewers got to get their act together because right now they're playing this game back on their heels. And with 10 days left in the season you just can't do that. Uh, not in the position they're in. Perez frustrated there taking himself out of scoring position. So Franco now on first. Hunter Dozier. Ball one to him. That was Perez's fifth career stolen base. He's five for six, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Once every couple of years, he makes his <laughs> one in. Dozier with a single and a stolen base. That led to the throwing error. That brought in the third run of the ball game for KC. Pulls the hands in. Kesson Huda going back into shallow center field makes the catch. Say hello to Alex Gordon again. And year number fourteen with KC. How's it just misses? Yeah, and I talked the first time up with Gordon about how he likes to get the bat out front, catch the ball out front. That's why you need to pitch him away. Alex Gordon this year has two hits the other way, just two. That's why they play the defense on cover two defense against him on the right side. Here are flex way back in right field. He's just not going to hit the ball to the other side of the field. 2 and 0, oh, and Hauser hasn't missed, missed by much with. Either of those pitches. Okay. But a hitter's count. Now for Gordon. Three and oh. Gordon's played the sixth most games in franchise history. He's in the top ten and all the important categories near the top five. In fact, sixth in hits. Fourth fourth most home runs. Swinging on the 3 0. Skied high in the air at Miller Park. Rios is under it for out number three. But Perez with another ribby. He's got three of the four. We're through two and a half in Milwaukee. Here's Corbin Burns, Dan, making his sixth start, and in his first five, his ERA is under two. He's finding it. Let's see if he racked up another strikeout. He did. Wow. I'll tell you what, right there. The pitch in the scope, he goes cutter away, 92, sinker in at 97, and then wipe out slider right there. Bonifacio goes around frustrated. Nasty cutter right there. Not much Bonifacio could do with that. You're kind of in protect mode with two strikes. Nasty pitch by Burns. And Cameron goes fishing. Whew. Corbin Burns. Wow. Eight strikeouts. There's another one right there. This has been the Corbin Burns show. He has fanned three in a row. 
Nine on the day. Oof. Some heat from Burns. 94 miles an hour with a little cut action. This has been a clinic for Corbin Burns. Seven shutout frames from Corbin Burns. This man belongs in a big league rotation. Introducing MLB Film Room, powered by Google Cloud. Search 3.5 million videos and create custom reels by yourself. You watch, you create, and then you share. Only at MLB.com slash Film Room. So that was last Monday on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. The Brewers in Detroit taking on the Tigers. You're at Scott Braun, Dan Puizak, and Sean Casey on the call. As Corbin Burns showed Tom Verducci that if Milwaukee gets in in a short series, Woodruff and Burns, uh oh, but they need the offense to get going. They got to get in first. And they have to get in first. Visudius, the third baseman, takes the 1 0 pitch down the line to third base, snagged by Franco across the diamond, and gets the put out. <laughs> Well, Danny Duffy is pitching the way you need to pitch with a 4 0 lead. See the bullpen up in the third inning for the Brewers. Can't let this game get away. It's Ray Black warming up. But Duffy is really, I like, his, I like his pace. I like his aggressiveness. He knows the game is in his hands right now, and he's pitching like it. Jacob Nottingham, the catcher. We'll wrap up the first time through the Brewers order. The chance to atone a little bit for the throwing error back in the first inning that led to a Kansas City run. Hold on sports gaming universe live commentary mode. There's strike one. MLB film room is cool actually was able to make a boof bonzer appreciation reel. That might be the comment of the night. Boof Bonzer appreciation reel. I'm so I needed that to go viral. I missed that. <laughs> I gotta check that out. <laughs> One and two now as Nottingham swings and misses. I don't know about you. When I see Nottingham, you know who I think of? Who? Mike Morse. Yo. It's the flow. It is. It, it's yeah. the hands away from the body in the batting stance. Speaking of batting stances, Craig Council. Oh. That's a great call, Tom. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's four of the last five batters that Danny Duffy has seen. All right, so we've had our eye on Ryan Braun. This is him in the outfield during that last inning. Still trying to stretch something out there. He's clearly compromised with something in the lower body. And again, I'm not using that as any kind of a cover for that throw back to the infield. It's not his arm that's painting him, but I mean, if I'm Craig Council, I need to have a conversation with the guy. You know, are you good to play? Yeah, sometimes you have to save an athlete from themselves, especially at this point down the stretch, fighting for a postseason spot. He's a veteran who lives for this type of environment. Yeah, but I need to know if he can uh, cover ground in right yes. field. I yeah. mean, I, I'm with you as a professional, especially a guy like Ryan Braun. He wants to be out there in these games. These are huge games. He's one of the only guys who's swinging it right now. That's a big issue. Yep. <clears throat> and against Danny Duffy, especially, right handed hitting is incredibly important for Milwaukee tonight. Avi Garcia in the air to center field. Olivares is going back. He's got a beat on it. And he makes the catch. A 1 2 3 inning. Second straight 1 2 3 frame for Danny Duffy. And the Brewers can't get anything going. It's 4 0 KC on the MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube. Merrifield coming up. Fastball is crushed to left field. And Whit Merrifield hits a three run home run and ties the game. Go ball. That ball is carrying. Go! Yes! 
And it is a goner. A home run by Adalberto Mondesi, his fourth this week. The Royals have tied it at three. Brady Singer pitches eight shutout innings in Cleveland tonight. What an outing for Brady Singer. That will take us to Edward Olivares. Edward Olivares. Wow. Here's the pitch to Franco. Franco launches it into deep left center field, and that is gone. And the Royals have scored seven runs tonight, all with two outs. And Mondesi, and that is gone. And the Royals have scored four more runs with two outs in the eighth inning. Line drive to left, Oliveris. Yes, he did. And Brad Keller has his first major league complete game shutout. Brad Keller, you were stellar. Right read coming up. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated well, without the express written consent. Now it's official. Thank you. Oh wow what a vote. Results from the YouTube interactive poll question the first one of the night which team will secure the second NL wild card spot. That is close. Huh? That crazy wow. close. Philadelphia the Phillies. I, I mean folks have a lot more faith in that Philly bullpen than I do <laughs> I got to tell you. Double header today they took game one but they're losing in game two. Against the Blue Jays. Definitely some scoreboard watching for Brewers fans. In addition to this MLB game of the week live on YouTube. That's into the fourth inning. Their squad trailing the Royals 4 0. Ryan O'Hearn grounded into a double play back in the first. That's what's so great about the expanded postseason. Oh, yeah. The scoreboard watching, it, it's like there's a lot of games you have to pay attention to. O'Hearn lifted in the air to left center field. At the track, Taylor makes the catch. Long run for him. And a little scare from Adrian Hauser, but no damage done. Center fielder, number 14, Edward Bullard. For a ground ball pitcher like Hauser, the last three outs, all fly outs. Tom, do you think? The expanded postseason sticks around in a quote unquote normal baseball season. There's a ground ball by the way. <laughs> he heard me. Uh, I do with some modifications. I, I think the first place teams and or especially the team that has the best record needs a better reward than in this pandemic season. I mean let's face it we're kind of making up things on the fly here just to get <laughs> baseball in right. I understand this year. Is sort of a one off but I think the idea of the expanded postseason is here to stay. It's finding the right format if you will. And again a team like the Dodgers best team in the, in the league. Needs a better reward for that. Over the course of 162 game season. Strike one to Nicky Lopez. Yes. You made the point. As we get this 0 one. Chopper down the line. Hauser covering first. He steps in the bag. We'll talk more about the postseason as this game goes on, to be sure. But right now, the focus for Milwaukee is stringing something together against Danny Duffy. They haven't been able to up to this point. They're down 4 0. Going to be a tough play. Urias charges bare hand. Throw to first. Got him. Nice play wow. by Luis Urias. Well, he is shining defensively, and so is the Brewers' defense. Good pitching, good defense. That'll keep you in games. Looked like it might be a potentially easy one, two, three oh, inning, and look boy. out. Tyrone Taylor. Goodbye. The first of his career. Wow, congratulations. First home run. He'll remember that forever. Fly ball center field should be deep enough Hayward back makes the catch Yelich tags 
And this ball game is over. Ryan Braun comes through for the Brewers with a sacrifice fly. Brandon Woodruff and Jacob Nottingham have been in sync from pitch number one. Give him 11 punch outs. Struck him out looking. Ties a career high with a dozen strikeouts. Oof. Some heat from Burns. Seven shutout frames from Corbin Burns. This man belongs in a big league rotation. So what's the difference this year in Kristen Yelich? Everybody wants to know. I'll show you something mechanically. Going back to last year, I talked about his great balance. Look at the stride direction. It's pretty much a neutral stride. And watch the extension. The wrist will not turn over until he's all the way through the baseball on balance finish. This year, look at the stride direction. More open. And I want you to watch his wrists. They're going to turn over before he has a chance to extend through the baseball. That's because he's drifting with that open stride. It's a much better stride right there on the take right there. And I've seen better swings this week from Christian Yelich mechanically. And he just got into a mechanical funk. And I, I think he's working his way out of it. Took it takes right there to single his first time up on a fastball against the lefty who's, let's face it, gives up almost nothing to left-handed hitters. And that's Pretty much the competition he's done the most damage against Yelich this year against left handed pitchers. So something's got to give here. Maybe it happens with the 2 0. Yelich gets into one. Left center field. Going back is Olivares at the wall. It is gone. Solo home run for Christian Yelich in Milwaukee is on the board. Telling you, Stephen, I've seen it all this week. The 2019 version of Yelich, we're seeing more of it. Again, better stride direction, much better balance. That head stays right over the center of gravity of the torso. There's no drift in that swing at all. Staying behind the baseball and driving it out to left center field. Craig Council told us before the game when he sees Christian Yelich taking fastballs the other way. That's the sign that he's back. Recorded a three hit game on Tuesday, his first such game of the year. And boy, would Milwaukee take that. A red hot Christian Yelich down the stretch, fighting for a postseason spot. Braun behind 0 and 2. So Yelich, we, we were talking about him with Craig Council before the game, and he mentioned two of the better consecutive days that he's seen from him all year long. Had a home run off a breaking ball. Took a fastball the other way against Adam Wainwright. He said that's the sign you're looking for that just before good things really start to happen, and that's a great thing right there. Well, this is interesting to me because every hitter wants to control the count, and last year, Kristen Yelich owned it. 419 average. That was second best in all of baseball. This year, are you kidding me? Kristen Yelich, 222. Went ahead in the count. Ryan Braun, a double base hit in the center field. Yeah, that is weird. I, I well, <laughs> when you brought that up, I was try, struggling to process it. Yeah, he's about 147th this year ahead of the count. But I think a big part of that, Stephen, is he's more passive. He's had more takes this year than ever before, even ahead of the count. Well, yeah, I think you were, Brewers have seen that this guy, you know, just have to get him off the field. Ben Gamble. Even if he's two for two. Let's see how he gets down the line here. It's the classic brawn compact swing, but he's clearly compromised some lower half injury. So Ryan Braun's night is done. Productive at the plate, two for two with two singles. Had the awkward play 
weird play laps play in right field at Old Kansas City. I hope he's okay. Jerko still waiting for a high fastball from Danny Duffy. Think he gets one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does he not. Not 2-0. -oh, he got the changeup. <laughs> I mean, Jed Jerko has, like Ryan Braun, been a godsend for Milwaukee, especially in this roller coaster ride offensively. Leading the team in OPS among qualifiers is this guy, not Christian Yelich, not Kessie in Huda, not Ryan Braun. Jed Jerko. Well, he's done a nice job defensively at first base. And in today's game, if you have someone in your lineup that can get on top of high fastballs, that's a really good quality to have. So look for something to hit. 3 1. Doesn't get it, but he does take his base. So, first and second, still nobody out. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning, the tying run coming up. And Kess Daddy can do that with one swing. Braun at the top railing of the dugout. He and Christian Yelich 4 for 4 today. The rest of the team 0 for 8 with four punch outs. He had one of them. And he has a lot of swing and miss in his game. For a guy who's a really good hitter with power to all fields, I'm a little bit surprised how much swing and miss there is in Keston's game. Yeah, that rate has spiked considerably here in his sophomore season. Took the National League by storm after his call up a year ago. 67 punch outs this year, tied with Joey Gallo for the second most in all of baseball. Hangs back on the 1 0, pulls it through the left side. Gamble will hold up. The bases are loaded in the fourth. Got the breaking ball, didn't get it in far enough to a good hitter, and he finds the hole. It's a good hold right here. Can't run on Alex Gordon, down three runs. Meeting at the mound for Danny Duffy, the Royals starter, who was cruising through three innings, Tom. Just 33 pitches thrown, four Ks. But has run into a whole bunch of trouble in the fourth. They lead off home run to Christian Yelich. Ryan Braun singles. Jed Jerko walks. Keston Buda singles. Now, what can you do for the crew, Tyrone Taylor? Benny No in the live commentary section says a grand slam here would be epic. Yes, it was. Yes, it would. Excuse me. And give the home team the lead. Patience as a young hitter. You have to understand it's the pitcher who's in trouble right here. Bases loaded. Shrink the strike zone. Taylor underneath the 1 0. Going back is Perez. He'll run out of room. Yeah, and that's kind of typical of a young hitter there. That pitch 1 0 is out of the zone. As a hitter, Taylor's looking to get something elevated to hit a fly ball to the outfield, right? Duffy made a really good pitch outside of the zone. Two of the first 10 Brewers reach base. Now four straight here in the fourth. Go ahead run at the plate. Tyrone Taylor represents it. Duffy misses just a touch low. Yeah, that was a good pitch. You know, Sal Perez didn't do many favors on, on presenting that pitch. Watch Perez's glove follow it out of the strike zone. I mean, you got to stick that or even bring it up a little bit. Woof. Nasty. Woof. That was pretty gross, Danny Duffy. Evens the count two and two. 
There's the sacrifice fly line. Anything green and beyond that should be deep enough to score the runner from third. The 2 2 to Taylor. Turns on it, pulls the hands in, lifted into center field. Olivares is under it. Is it deep enough? No. Gamble has to hold. Boy, I'm really surprised at that. You have to tag on that. And clearly, Olivares believed he wasn't even how to play at the plate. Made the throw to third base. I don't understand why Gamble didn't tag on that ball. Two on his gum and think about it. Let's see. And it looked like he was listening for Ed Cedar, give him advice on that. Throw got back in quick. Uh, that, that's a little conservative for me. I want to see that with the sack fly line. Oh, thank you. <laughs> was this ball beyond the green line? I thought it was. It was easily behind it. Uh, it's just surprising. Again, yeah, to me, Milwaukee's been playing this game a little too conservatively on their heels. Still a big situation for Orlando Arcia. Bases loaded, one out in the fourth, team down by three. Duffy wanted that one, just missed, now 2 0. Oh. MLB commenting Gamo's beard is just outstanding. No disagreements. He and Justin Turner and Gritty. Arcia ready. 3 0. Oh. Well, I know hitters like to hit 3 0 these days, but this has to be a take right here. Got to make Duffy throw at least a couple of pitches in the zone. He takes ball four, four two. Julio Urias will step in now. Action in the KC pen. Jake Newberry getting warm as Danny Duffy's hit a little bit of a wall here in the fourth. Well, remember, Duffy's out there on eight days of rest after missing the team flight to, to Detroit. That caused him to get scratched from his start there. Strike one from Duffy. You know, Urias, if you look at his season line, says one story but here's another one in games started specifically by Adrian Hauser today starter for the Brewers Urias now eight for 19 after grounding out his first time up so over 400 in games started by Hauser you got an explanation for that they must be homies <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it's coming into today eight for 18. in his first campaign with the crew came over in an offseason deal multiplayer trade with the Padres sent Trent Grisham and Zach Davies to San Diego for Urias and Eric Lauer it's been a one sided deal thus far in favor of the Friars the one one to Urias he takes strike two Base is loaded. Duffy's one two swung on and missed strike three a big strikeout for the Royals lefty. Yeah I went back to the breaking ball right here. Rios just didn't seem like he was on his breaking ball. Good job by Duffy and Sal Perez to stick with it. 
gets the swing and miss K. All right, Jacob Nottingham, what do you got? Well, he's got to make sure that Duffy gets the ball down because Duffy got him last time on the high fastball. And that's the go to point on Nottingham. Bases still jam. Nottingham turns on one to left field. Did you? Grand slam. The Brewers have taken the lead. Said the high fastball was the way to go, but Duffy figures I'll start him with a breaking ball. Get ahead, breaking ball, and instead, Nottingham just doesn't concede that pitch. It's a great reaction. Hit off the fastball, react to spin. You see a lot of guys take that first pitch breaking ball. Nottingham is ready. The reaction from Danny Duffy, no way. No way. First career grand slam for Jacob Nottingham, second time down the slide for Bernie. Avi Garcia, that gets down. Two out, knock for the leadoff batter. And the crew have batted around. But it just seemed like that Yelich home run knocked the wheels off the vehicle for Danny Duffy. First pitch changeup right here, broke his bat. And another hit for Garcia against Duffy for 14 in his career. And after looking so spectacular through the first three innings, the script was flipped on Danny Duffy in the fourth. Five hits. Six runs, turning a 4 0 KC edge to a 6 4 deficit. Wow. On this date in 1993, the Yankees, Red Sox, and some fans contributed to one of the wildest finishes you've ever seen. Tonight, the Tigers hosting the Boston Red Sox. The veteran and the great pitcher, Roger Clements, will be gone for the Red Sox. So the Rocket ready to go to work. Trammell's going, and they swing and a miss. Got him with the good fastball. There's a swing and a miss. Three strikeouts in a row now for Roger Clements. He stood there like the house by the side of the road and watched that one go by. Talk up number four. That's five all in a row. Six, number seven for Clemens. He's got him. And number nine. Everything he's throwing up there is exploding. And that's number 11. And he gets another one. Number 13, 14, 15, 16. It is Roger Clemens' night. That's the 19th strikeout for Roger Clemens. He got him. He tied his own record 20 strikeout ties his own major league record we've seen a great performance by Roger Clemens boy we sure had this is worth the price of admission and what can you say about Roger Clemens other than he's just been a great pitcher for a long time that inning by the Brewers has me dazed and confused that was actually on this date in 1996 Roger Clemens the rocket took the hill for the Red Sox and tied a major league record set by Roger Clemens. How cool was that listening to Ernie Harwell? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, no offense to Roger. It was nice watching you punch out 20, <laughs> but I love listening to Ernie. I felt like, you know, I was sitting on a porch with a lemonade in my hand. Oh my gosh, it takes you back. What are we going to get in watching Jake Newberry, Tom Verducci? 
A uh, sinker slider guy, uh, although I, these days they call it a slider sinker guy because you'll see more sliders and sinkers. Christian Yelich led off this fourth inning with a home run. Danny Duffy, he retired eight of the first ten Brewers batters, but just two of the final nine. Around in the order we go for an offense that has been trying to find itself consistently. Yelich doing that damage against the lefty in Duffy, but as we mentioned earlier, it's the righties who have given him fits. Batting just 174 this year. Has hit home runs, but hasn't produced many hits. Well, there was something about the Yelich home run, though, that I really think knocked Danny Duffy back on his heels. Duffy had not allowed an extra base hit to a left handed hitter this year. It's Jacob Nottingham just hit the go ahead grand slam. First slam of his career. A 2 1 pitch to Yelich, breaking ball in there for strike two. Nottingham has six hits, Tom. Four of them are home runs. <laughs> Four homers and 31 ABs. Yes. That's a little Mike Morris like. <laughs> yeah. Statcast powered by Google Cloud showing you the spray chart for Yelly. Shifting on him. Yeah, gosh, he's seen that a ton this year. He sees the 2 2. Spits on it. It was in the dirt. Now we're full. Yeah, this is a dangerous pitch. Yelich now has seen Newberry's slider, and to me, he has taken all of his sliders on balance, so he is seeing it well. And I'm always leery about a slider pitcher when he has to throw it for a strike, which you do at three and two. You tend to guide the ball in the zone instead of letting it go out of the zone. Dangerous pitch right here. See how careful Newberry is with the former MVP. The 3 2. Yelich offers and misses. A big strikeout for Newberry. Great pitch. Great location. That being said, Yelich, you're good, bro. You hit the home run to start off a big crooked number for the crew. Grand slam, and it's 6 4 just like that. Hi Royals fans, I'm Alex Gordon and this is Royals Replay. Alright, so we're going to go over uh, probably my biggest hit in my career. It's game one, 2015 World Series, bottom of the ninth, one out, 4-3 uh, game. I've seen this probably 500 times. So there's a quick pitch. Obviously, it didn't sink right down the middle. And if, if you've never been to a ballpark, it's pretty pretty hard, for at least for me, to hit it out the center. It's a huge ballpark. I always joke with their uh, hitting coach, Dale Swain, at the time that he always says, I can't, I can't muscle up and get it out the center. So um, I always joke around with Dale Swain about that, that, you know, you know look, I can't hit balls out the center. So pretty big, pretty big moment. Um, Actually, during when it happened, you know, looking back on it now, around the bases, I don't even remember, you know, rounding the bases just because it was so exciting, such a big moment. Hopefully, we can do that again sometime. Welcome back to Milwaukee where the home team now ahead so it seems like a good time to share this story about the Milwaukee Brewers. Yes the positivity train. This is the brainchild of Ryan Braun who contributed two hits today before leaving with an apparent injury and certainly a part of the usual momentum Stephen. This team has Craig Tember seems to be the case again right now as the <laughs> Brewers making progress towards perhaps another postseason berth. Thank you JP. Yeah that positive. Positivity train has been churning Tom Reducci the last couple Septembers. 
I mean no team outside the Dodgers have played better in the month of September than the Milwaukee Brewers trying to do the same this year and earn a third consecutive postseason berth for the first time in franchise history. New pitcher for Milwaukee Drew Rasmussen go Beavs from an Oregon State Beaver who a perfect game in Corvallis in 2015. And one of the reasons why Milwaukee in the years under council been so good in September because of moves like this you see Gamble stays in the game and right field for Braun. Craig Council squeezes everything out of a game that he can and knowing as you mentioned with the off day that he's got a full rested bullpen Rasmussen Knable Williams Hader. That's probably the script if the game goes according to plan with Craig Council. Some managers might have ran Hauser back out there and see you know get another inning out of him. Forestall the bullpen carousel not Craig Council extremely aggressive. All the stuff that these guys have to is there's a grounder over to second one down. Milwaukee Penn is chock full of it. Here's our next poll question today. Which city has better game day food? Oh, oh that's a tough I, one. I'm glad oh I'm not goodness. participating in the poll right now on YouTube. Kansas City or Milwaukee. Tom, I'm putting Woo. you on the hot seat right now. Well, I love my barbecue. Man, I might have to go with Kansas City, but you've had the brats in Milwaukee, haven't you? They're yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's it's a tough one. That's a, I feel like that's a mood question. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you're just in the mood for some barbecue. And sometimes you're feeling a, a brat and a beverage. <laughs> you know? I, oh, nachos are a always one. a good play. All right, so vote right now. We'll reveal the results in the next half inning. Best game day food. Strike two from Rasmussen. He singled his last time. Polish sausage. <laughs> I'm not sure what beer cheese is. JP Morosi, perhaps you can investigate. <laughs> beer cheese? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, not not familiar with that. I, I will <laughs> tell you this. In Detroit, we have Coney dogs. Coney dogs have to be part of the conversation. No, but it's, that was not a choice. That was not a choice. This, there's no right ins. <laughs> well, that's my mistake. I, I have to vote on some level for the Coney dog. Uh, I will say this, though, here in the ballpark, uh, great to be at Miller Park. Uh, the, a big part of this Brewer team, as you mentioned, the bullpen. Remember this, because of the off day yesterday, while perhaps enjoying some bratwursts, Hader didn't pitch, nor did Devin Williams. So a lot of rest there. Uh, maybe some bratwurst enjoyed and ready to go multiple innings perhaps tonight. JP, I got an assignment for you. Oh. I really want to know what beer cheese is. Can you figure that out during the course of this game? Is it a dipping? It might be a dipping thing. It sounds good, whatever. That's it is. a great homework yeah, assignment. Like I will. Thing. I will work on. I was actually going to. I was going to ask our fellow environmental science and public policy graduate from Harvard, Brent Suter, about that. But that's <laughs> even that's probably out of his realm of expertise. I knew we were going to get a crimson mention mention at some point this year. Salvi Perez again. Yes. Three for three. You can't stop this guy. No, you can't. You and can't it, even hope to contain him. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the exit velocity is. We saw him break his bat and get a hit. Now you see a bloop and get a hit. Yeah, that's Kansas City royalty. Oh, yes. Well done. All kinds of gold gloves, silver sluggers. Oh, yeah, World Series MVP. That is some trophy case. Now tying run at the plate Michael Franco and the way this go game has gone thus far I mean who knows but that, that poll question has got me locked in on food right now the, the stomach's barking at me a little bit I did not prepare myself playing out the meals well ball bounces away from Nottingham Salvador Perez <laughs> he may have stolen his fifth career base today. But then he's he getting got tired. Yeah. <laughs> he's been on base a lot. It's like the, the NOS button in Fast and Furious. Once you hit it, you, you're done. You're cooked. <laughs> Five points vids. Beer cheese sounds like something you wake up with, with on your shirt and be quite proud of. 
By the way, they are holding Sal Perez on at first yeah, base this time. They learned their lesson. They learned their lesson. Beware the big man on the bases. Rasmussen and Nottingham have to get on the same page here. Two outs in the top of the fifth inning. They just took the lead thanks to a six spot in the fourth with two home runs. The 1 1 down in the dirt. Like you said, they're holding Salvador Perez on because of this in the third inning. Won't happen again. <laughs> And again, it's the right thing to do with when you have a right handed pull hitter up, you should be holding him on. Some paint for strike two. We'll look at Perez on first. And now Franco. At the plate. Good work by Nottingham. Well, he's been active back there tonight, hasn't he? He's a lot of balls in the dirt. <laughs> so Franco came into today second on the Royals and hits with 52. It's always harder for the bigger catchers, especially you're going to use that one leg on the ground stance. And Rasmussen where he wants it. Didn't put it there. Two out walk. First and second for KC. First baseman number 17, Hunter Dozier. Try and do some damage against the young righty and Rasmussen, who made his major league debut on the 19th of August. First pitch, 98 miles per hour for strike one. Bozier one for two with a single in the first. We saw Claudio up at the bullpen, and he would be in this game if it gets to Gordon with O'Hearn behind him. And we've seen Rasmussen throw some good breaking balls, but he tends to overthrow it. Has the pitch he wants to throw here at the 1 1. Breaking ball a tad high. Well, if you're Hunter Dozier right here, I mean, you have to hit off of the 98 mile an hour fastball anyway. So Council getting anxious. He had two outs, bases empty, and now he's got a hitter's count with two runners on. And Dozier should be selling out for fastball right here. Dozier fouls it back. That's when you know you've got a good fastball. You know, 97, you can throw it in the zone. You don't need to actually paint with it. You had a hitter sitting on fastball and he wasn't able to time it up. I would stay with fastball because I don't want the count to get the 3-2 and start Perez at second base. And if you can ideally get that fastball top shelf the strike zone. Rasmussen ready. Two on, two out. To Hunter Dozier. Rung up. Generous call. But Rasmussen and the Brewers will take it and take the 6 4 lead into the dugout. They're coming back up to the bottom of the fifth inning. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube continues. Christian Yelich traded to the Brewers. What does this deal mean for the Brewers going into 2018? Here I come. Christian Yelich has tied it up. It'll be a triple for Yelich. It's a cycle. Grand slam for Christian.
Christian Yelich. What more can this guy do? Yelich comes up throwing. The tag, he is out! What a play by Yelich. Yelich is gonna turn and burn! It's a triple! He hits for the cycle for the second time this year. And there's Yelich, deep to right, and this one is gone! Christian Yelich has done it again! Get that guy some hardware. Long run, Yelich makes the play, but ends up in the front row. The Brewers' MVP comes up with a stellar play. You're looking at the National League most valuable player, Christian Yelich. He's not just a good player who has great moments. He's now in the elite category. Christian Yelich just hit his third home run in this game. The Brewers will walk it off tonight. Christian Yelich delivers again. I hope you're ready for this. My time, my moment. Make seven pregame picks that feature the storylines from around the league and compete for cash every day with MLB Quick Pick. See the rules and enter at MLB.com slash quick pick. I want to pick that last pitch by Rasmus. This is a huge pitch in the game. 2-2 pitch. Did it get plate? Todd Titchener said it did. It's clearly off the dish. That's a big pitch because Claudio was up and warmed in the bullpen, ready to come in in case Dozier got the next at bat to Gordon. And I don't blame Dozier. That really was not on the plate. Big call. Ben Gamble did not start tonight's game. He came in a pinch run for Ryan Braun after Braun's second single. Braun appeared to Injure himself on a swing in the first. The official word is lower back tightness for the veteran outfielder. Gamble slots into the third spot in Milwaukee's order. Let's go back to Milwaukee and say hello to JP Morosi once again. JP, what do you got? He did have some back issues toward the end of August had to miss several days so now you wonder the Brewers certainly hoping it's not that serious again because several days is half of the remaining games of this regular season with all those huge meetings ahead against the Reds and the Cardinals next week. Thank you JP. It's a good report but I was hoping for some beer cheese <laughs> beer cheese info. Ben Gamble. Will go the other way. That ball gets down just shy of the warning track. He'll round first, hustle into second base. Will they stand up? Lead off double here in the fifth. He did a nice job staying on this pitch. Again, Newberry throwing a lot of sliders. That's his game. Keep the hands back. You know, it was interesting. I remember it, Stephen, during summer camp, as they called it, mm -hmm. asking Craig Council, like, who in your camp has really jumped out at you? And he mentioned two names, Corbin Burns, Ben Gamble. Mm -hmm. so they both look like really different players. It's a good call by the manager. Yeah, I think he knows his club. Corbin Burns. Thought to be one of the 2019 breakouts. It did not happen. In fact, it went the other way for him last year. But putting it together in 2020, along with Brandon Woodruff at the front end of the Milwaukee rotation. You know, Craig Council said something interesting. And again, getting back to that last call on Dozier, he said the data they have shows that the strike zone is bigger this year, that umpires are calling more strikes. And he mentioned the fact that. There's nobody in the stands and that some of the veteran op umpires opted out. So you have a lot of umpires making their major league debuts this year. Interesting observation. Now when I looked at the data I saw that called strikes are up this year. Interesting. But that called strikes on pitches out of the zone is exactly the same as what it was last year. 
So hitters aren't swinging as much and there are more called strikes but not necessarily missed calls. It's an easy call to make there in the dirt 2 and 0. Oh. But I thought that was interesting. He said nobody in the stands that can have an impact on the umpire. Oh no question. I yeah. mean it's a totally different sport. I mean we've seen some of the game's biggest stars impacted by the lack of crowd energy and noise emotion ambiance. However you want to look at it not having fans in the stands. It's it's got an impact on each and every game regular season down the stretch postseason for sure. A year of adjustments just rolling with punches right for everybody yeah. in the world. I mean think about if you were a musician or a, <laughs> uh, an actor on Broadway and there was nobody in the stands yeah, it might affect what how you do your job right. Yeah. Three and one now to Jed Jerko. Jerko signed a one year two million dollar deal with Milwaukee. There's also a team option for 2021 attached to that pack. You don't want to throw him a fastball. They didn't there. Newberry being conservative, but the first two have reached. Yeah, that's a good point, Stephen, because that's what really came back to burn Danny Duffy, right? He walked Jerko as well because he didn't want to challenge him with a fastball. And it led to a grand slam by Nottingham. Here's another one you maybe want to be a little cautious with when throwing fastballs. But the swing and miss has been way up for Kess Daddy in 2020. Strikeout rate up to 32 percent. Led the National League in K's coming into today and he struck out his first appearance up. And then singled in the fourth came around to score in the grand slam hit by Nottingham. He's got two on for him. Here in the bottom of the fifth trying to extend Milwaukee's edge inside ball one. Statcast power got by Google Cloud can show us that here is much more than just a pole power hitter. This guy uses the entire field. I remember when the Brewers called him up and Craig Council told me, I know this, he's going to hit home runs. When you see a young player hitting them out to all fields, it's a great sign of a good hitter. And again, I'm a little perplexed like you, Stephen, from the swing and miss point of view. Especially on fastballs. Sometimes he has a tendency to get underneath them. Yep. But we've seen him take pitches, fastballs, high velocity fastballs, and hit them out even to right field. He has a hitter's count. 2 and 0. Oh. Swings and miss. Yeah, that's the swing and miss right there, just getting underneath the baseball. I mean, he doesn't need to lift the baseball, just make contact. He's got a, really a kind of a short swing. It's kind of an unusual setup. He's got a toe tap and a leg kick. Misses at the two and one. He has the lowest contact percentage in the strike zone. What does that mean to the casual fan who hears that for the first time? Yeah I mean listen if you're chasing that's one thing but missing pitches in the zone like we've seen the last two that to me is just swing path related. That means the bat is not in the zone for a long time and that's what happens when it goes a little uphill. Newberry battles back after being down 2 0 in the count three straight strikes and a punch out of Keston Huda. Yeah, he didn't like that call either. This is close but maybe a little off the dish. Give credit to Sal Perez with a nice job of presenting. Watch the fingers turn into the zone. That's what you always do as a catcher. You don't have to move the whole hand. Just curl your fingers around the ball and bring it into the box. And Kesson probably felt that was the exact same pitch as the first two in the at bat. They were both called balls. One down. Breaking ball. It's the plate strike one. And he's ahead of Tyrone Taylor. Fourteenth game for Taylor. Councils 
told us that he's it's at the point where if there's a lefty going he's probably getting a start. So the righty Newberry in in relief high in the air high in the air. Forever it seemed Mondesi is under it. And maybe Taylor is getting some run because these guys didn't figure it out in 2024 Milwaukee. These are the notable offseason additions. Avi Garcia signed a two-year deal. Brock Holt signed, already released. Same with Justin Smoke. In the trade that sent Trent Grisham down to San Diego. And who knows if Trent Grisham has the same year in Milwaukee that he's having in San Diego. You can't assume that. But when you look at where things are now. Oh. That ball's hit well in the left center field. And that one gets over the wall. A three run shot for Orlando Arcia. Nine to four, Milwaukee. Says you stop talking about my teammates like that. We can hit the ball just fine. First pitch breaking ball again. We saw Nottingham do that for the grand slam. And Arcia reacting to the slider that just got too much of the plate. Beautiful swing on that pitch. Seven runs on two swings. All at the both at the bottom of the order too. Marcia in the seventh spot. Nottingham the nine hole. And once again the walk. Cashes into another Milwaukee run with the help of the home run. And misses away. So, all the time we've spent in the baseball world has spent talking about Milwaukee's offense and its inability to stay on the train consistently. Here's what's happened over the last bunch of games as the 2 1 pitch is grounded over. Charging Franco, throw to first, not in time. 19 runs. We saw that on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. 1, 2, 0, 2, 2, 18, 2, 6, and now 9. Third most runs scored in the game by Milwaukee this season here tonight. Well, I guess if you're Craig Council, you can look at it on, hey, this is back to back games now. Yeah, that's true. Six and nine, and clearly safe. Beat the rap at first base. <laughs> the Milwaukee Brewers in the live commentary. Bernie working off the old Friday fish fry. Yeah, he's getting <laughs> some work on that slide. Runs by game the last eight ever since that 19 run outburst and beat down in Detroit. It includes being no hit by Alec Mills of the Chicago Cubs. Well, we talked at the top. This there's a lot of swing and miss in this lineup in general, but they do have power. I mean, this team came in hitting 225. That would be the worst. Batting average in Brewers history. Current record, you want to call it a record, 1971 <laughs> team hit 229. The very stays away from Nottingham there. Newberry and Nottingham. Basing off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. I'll never do that again. Don't worry, folks. That sounds like a Shakespearean <laughs> drama. <laughs> Nottingham provided some drama. His last time up in the fourth with his first career grand slam. 
That touches the zone. Newberry gets the call two and two. Yeah, made the cut commenting. These YouTube games are good luck for the Brew Crew. That's yeah, 28 runs in two games on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. That's just science. The 2 2 swung through by Nottingham for a strikeout. And I wondered for a second if Newberry didn't know that it was the end of the inning, but he's getting his rosin bag. But Milwaukee got another blast. A three run shot from Orlando Arcia. And it's a five run lead going to the sixth. Hey, do you want to see the best behind the scenes action from your favorite team in Kansas City? Well, follow the Royals on YouTube. Search Kansas City Royals on YouTube to see exclusive moments from players, coaches, and more. Be sure to subscribe. Check in every Thursday for new content. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube rolls on from Miller Park in Milwaukee with Tom Verducci and JP Morosi on location. I'm Steven Nelson. Thanks for being here on this Friday evening as we kick off your weekend and the stretch run here this 2020 regular season. The Brewers entered action in this one one and a half games behind a postseason spot and Milwaukee ahead of Kansas City in the latest YouTube interactive poll question the better game day food Kansas City barbecue or Milwaukee brats cheese curds and brews. 57% of you. I'm surprised. It's a bigger gap than I expected, but I think honest with you. once you mentioned beer cheese, <laughs> the votes started <laughs> piling in on Milwaukee. Alex Claudio, a lefty out of the pen. <laughs> you think our crew's on it, on it. Beer cheese. At first I thought, okay, maybe it's two words close together on the awning. <laughs> it's beer and cheese. But no, beer cheese is the thing. You got a pretzel, you want to dip it. There's strike two. JP Morosi is investigated for us and has more. All right, Professor Verducci gave me a research assignment and I have <laughs> completed my paper. Here's where here's where we are. Beer cheese was founded in Winchester, Kentucky, where they still have every summer the beer cheese festival as Gordon uh, singles there to left. Now the Beer Cheese Festival takes place in Winchester, Kentucky, not this year due to COVID-19, but book your travel now for next June. They're going to have it in June of 2021. And notably, we always ask, is there a baseball connection to Winchester, Kentucky? Well, of course there is. Matt Ginter, former Major League pitcher, is from Winchester, Kentucky. His final year in pro baseball was pitching in 2009 for the Nashville Sounds in the Milwaukee organization where he was a teammate of Matt Gamble, brother of Ben Gamble. Okay, Ben Gamble to Matt Gamble to Matt Ginter to Winchester to Beer Cheese. Back to you, Stephen Nelson. Move over Kevin Bacon, the six degrees of Beer Cheese separation. 
I, to, per, Professor Verducci, that's an A plus, I think. That well, is some research paper. And some hitting here by the Royals to start the sixth. Yeah, Claudio came in for the left-handed hitters, and both of them went the other way. Alex Gordon with his third hit all year to the opposite field. You don't expect that to happen. But the Royals are trying to get back into this game. And my only question, Stephen, is I still actually don't know what beer cheese is. <laughs> it's a dipping sauce. It isn't just it, a sauce. It's, it's, or, so it's you a, put a pretzel in it's like it? A, it's like a side, a little appetizer condiment. Okay. I'm the the commentary section will inform me if, if I'm off base with that description, if I'm selling it short. Lefties were just 5 for 25 against Claudio, by the way, for that. So buckle up, folks. This game of the week live on YouTube could get weird. It's 9 4, but two on, both in scoring position. Nobody out in the sixth. Edward Olivares. 0 for 2. Eric Yardley preparing to come on out of the Milwaukee bullpen. Olivares, his 13th game with the Royals since joining the club from San Diego. He entered the year as the number 20 prospect. In the Padres system, he was the piece that came over in the Trevor Rosenthal trade. Takes the one-two in the center field. Huda going back, he has it. He comes home, and Gordon could not tag up, not deep enough, so he'll stay at third base. Well, you can think about it with Harris' arm. Obviously, it's not his strength, but that's just not deep enough. And I think here the conversation is, you know, be careful with Lopez. And I, I think Yardley is up for Merrifield, the on deck batter. So while this conversation takes place on the bump at Miller Park, let's Talk about some other headlines around the majors right now on this Friday, September the 18th. On the 17th, both the Chicago White Sox and Tampa Bay Rays clinched a postseason berth, and the Yankees made history. Six plus home runs in three straight games, first team in the big leagues to ever do that. Jared Walk, I mean, goodness, out of nowhere, making a late push for rookie of the year. I don't know if it's going to be enough to unseat Kyle Lewis. And Luis Robert, who have been the one two back and forth for most of the year. Robert has hit a bit of a rookie wall of late, and Lewis has probably assumed the lead spot. But Walsh has been a bright spot in a very abysmal year for the Angels, to put it bluntly. As we bring our focus back to Milwaukee, where the Royals and Brewers are playing in this MLB game of the week live on YouTube. I'm Stephen Elson. It's an honor to be with Tom Verducci, J.P. Morosi, and our fantastic crew, and all of you watching from around the globe. Infield playing back, conceding a run right here. Nicky Lopez, number nine hitter for KC. Statcast powered by Google Cloud showing you the sack fly line. Hit distance needed to score based on the arm strength of the fielders. And the speed of Alex Gordon there at third base. Oh, perfect placement from Claudio for strike two. Second and third for Lopez. He fights it off. And it drifts foul. We just saw a good look at Claudio before he puts the ball in his glove. He's got that circle change up grip. That's his best pitch. I mean, you're going to see everything in the 70s and 80s, nothing in the 90s with Alex Claudio. 
if he needs to, he will re-grip in the glove. There's the change-up grip. It's always a good idea if you're a change-up pitcher, even when you're not in a game, hold that grip and just it's a field pitch. Pause before the pitch as well from Claudio. Oh yeah, you get a lot of deception in delivery and stuff. Made a couple of good fastballs in on Lopez. Let's see if he goes back to the change up here. Claudio shakes into position for the one two. Lopez refusing to go down without a fight here. Former fifth round pick out of Creighton University. In 2016. Having a good at bat. Claudio did come back with a change up probably a little more up than he wanted but. Lopez grinding out this at bat. Nicky not known for his pop just three home runs in 149 career games. So why not now. I tried. I tried for the Royals fans watching on <laughs> to give some good mojo. But hey, he did well to fight it off and continue this good A.B. Time. Yeah that's a great point Steven because to me Nicky's a better hitter when he hits the ball the other way. And the numbers actually show that his batting average to the pole side is really not that good. He's much better. Let the ball get a little deep. So he's been in two strike mode here. He can wield the bat 296 career hitter in the minors the one two Claudio finally gets him. Went back to that two seamer in watch it run in. Good movement good location. Claudio happy he did his job. And now is night complete. Pitching change in Milwaukee as the Brewers try and maintain a five run lead. OK so I teased it earlier I can't talk about what happened on this date in 1993 and not show it to you. The Red Sox the Yankees and yes some fans you may have forgot about those things here in 2020 they all contributed to one of the craziest finishes of all time. Yankees trail three to one and is the last hope to keep this game alive for the New York Yankees. And he hits this one and this will not count. Timeout is called because we have people running out of the stands and onto the field. That's a shame. That was a game ending up. So here's the replay. 0 and 1. And a base hit to left field. Suddenly plenty of interest here at Yankee Stadium. Chopped between first and second. Diving stop. No play. Gallego will score and runners at first and second for the Yankees. Deion James, a career 500 hitter against Greg Harris. Pulls off and the bases are loaded. The game that ended 12 minutes ago is still not over. And guess who's coming up? Base hit right field. Tying run in. Here's the throw to the plate. Do you believe this? The Yankees have won it. Tom, do you remember that? Crazy. No, not all the details of that. That was a great line from Jim Cott to the game that ended 12 minutes ago still isn't over. <laughs> Kitty, I mean, he's in the building today here at Illinois Network, Jim Cott. Eric Yardley is there at Miller Park. New pitcher with two outs in the sixth, Tom. Yeah, he's coming in to try to get Merrifield with his, he's a true sinker slider guy with deception with the slingshot delivery. He's got to run that sinker in enough to open up the outside part of the plate for the slider. All right Eric welcome to the game. Here's one of the best hitters in baseball. The lead off man for Kansas City. Whit Merrifield. Whoa. Two 
two grounded foul. Count back to even one and one. Yeah, he's shaking his head as I mentioned earlier. Witt does use the whole field, but early in the count, he's a great pole hitter. He's looking for something he can turn on. The deeper he gets into the count, the more he's likely to use the opposite side of the field or up the middle. Seven of Merrifield's last eight games coming into today, multi hit efforts. He's already got one. So, Royals fans are saying, well, that means he's due for another one here with the 1 1. It's like a wiffle ball. <laughs> it's a frisbee. Goodness. Five points vids in the comment section. How many side armors do they have? A lot of different looks out of that Milwaukee bullpen and pitching staff. Let's dive deeper into Whit Merrifield is hitting profile. This is batting average on balls put into play. And you see the numbers this year don't quite match the hot zones from the previous four seasons for Whit Merrifield. Again, below, you see that 556 middle in. This guy is not just an opposite field hitter. Now, with two strikes here against Yardley, he has to protect away. But a real good hitter on inside pitches. Are you surprised he stuck around in KC past the deadline? A big piece to be moved. No, because they like him that much. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, Yardley just misses. Nottingham tried to get him the strike three call. Instead, it's now three and two. How about Yardley trying to influence the call? <laughs> Taking a couple of steps toward the dugout. He said, I got you. Well, well, hold on a second. Not quite. Stark raving sports reminding folks watching Whit Merrifield. College World Series legend Whit Merrifield. Yes. Gamecock fans of South Carolina know very well, as does his former teammate Jackie Bradley Jr. 3 2, Merrifield, another grounder into foul territory. Yes, I love this about Whit Merrifield. Hits by count since 2018, the most with two strikes. The guy does not mind getting deep into counts. Yardley and drafted free agent at a Seattle University his 3 2 to Merrifield right back to him off his leg Yardley recovers throws the first and gets him Nottingham gives his pitcher some love maybe get him an ice bag either way Milwaukee leads 9 to 4 on the MLB game of the week live on YouTube stay with us. If you're watching right now, listen up. I want you to do something. Download the MLB app. That gets you what? In game video highlights, live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and so much more. Again, the MLB app. If you haven't downloaded already, do so right now. 
Well, if you're a pitcher, as soon as you let the ball go, you become an infielder. And sometimes you become a hockey goalie. Stop it no matter what with any part of your body. There's a foot off the finger. Recover in time with a little bit of a slip right there. And they just look for all the world like a base hit through the middle. Two more runs for Kansas City, but the skate save gets a third out instead. That's a huge turning point in this game. Second and third. How do you like his change up to first base, too? <laughs> Yeah, Nottingham giving him a smile. No pat on the backside. Good work. Missed opportunity for Kansas City, but still plenty of ball game left. It's 9-4, Milwaukee. Oh, what a snag at second base. Nicky Lopez, that is beautiful baseball. Welcome to the big league, Scott Blewett. He gets on the mound, throws one pitch, and this is what Major League defense looks like. Two steps and a dive. Got to his feet very quickly and actually had more time than he thought with the strong throw. Beautiful play. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it, Nicky. Yeah, Major League debut. And out the shoot, you get Avi Garcia, Christian Yelich, and Ben Gamble. His 2019 resume in the minors. He blew it. It's the high strike quickly ahead of Christian Yelich. Yelich, two for three. That cast powered by Google Cloud taking you back to the fourth inning as Yelich took this one out. 106.7 miles per hour off the bat. Close to 400 feet. The one two chopped over to second. And two away. I blew it. Looks really comfortable on the mound. We like to see that the young pitcher making his major league debut or any time. Should correct myself. It was the shortstop. Mondesi again as the shift was on for Christian Yelich. Either way, the ground out. Okay. He gets the call for strike one on Ben Gamble. It's so nice to have a catcher back there like Sal Perez. You watch Blewett. He's just looking at the sign and going. Hey, there he shook him right there. I like that. 6'6", six, six, 245. Ben Gamble in the air to center field. And it gets down to the base of the wall. Olivares will get it back into the infield, but a two-out double for Gamble. And you saw a little giddy up in his stride, too. And we saw that earlier on his other base hit and this time he saw it a little more. Yeah. Looks like he wants to stay in the game but he's clearly protecting something. So Blewett wanted to double up on the change up and did. Gamble was ready. So the number three spot in the order for Milwaukee between Ryan Braun and Gamble four for four. Braun had two base hits. Gamble has two doubles off the bench. That's on. It's, yeah, you can see what you're talking about right there. Yeah, it looks like he's favoring a hamstring right there. Luckily for him, that's an easy double. If you're Craig Council looking down your bench, you don't have many outfield options left. I guess Eric Sogar could maybe go on the field, but Vogelbach, Narvaez, Jace Peterson as well. And if you're third base coach Ed Cedar, you got to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. In a 9 4 ball game, you'd love to send the runner with two outs, but based on that stride from Gamble, I'd be very careful extending him. 
The veteran Jerko against Scott Blewett. Jerko shoots it to right field. Will they send Gamble? No, they won't. There you go, Tom. So first and first and third. Yeah, it's paying attention. Yeah. No reason. And again, if third base coaches, they look for reasons to send people with two outs, but this is a one hot bullet to Merrifield. And again, in Gamble's condition, no reason to send him. So Scott blew it on the mound from Syracuse, New York. He went to Baker High School, Baldwinsville. Our ace in the hole with us is Matt Baker, of course, who's given us all the nuggets to sound smart. And he astutely points out that maybe earlier, that's why Gamble didn't tang up from third, and we didn't notice it until his double out of the box here, that something's been bothering him. Another thing to monitor for Milwaukee, which already lost Ryan Braun to lower back discomfort in the fourth inning. At the corners, our Brewers for Keston Huda. He holds Gamble at third. Let's hold up, my man. It's a good call by our Matt Baker. Can't get anything by him. No, you can't. Nothing. Not a thing. The guy's got a little bit of a cold, a ready nose. Matt <laughs> Baker knows about it. Loud strike. Newly married, Matt Baker. Mazel. Keston's numbers with two outs and runners in scoring position. Another foul ball. Huda went ninth overall in 2017 out of UCI. It's UC Irvine, for those not familiar with the West Coast. Widely regarded as the best college hitter in that draft class. Concerns about his elbow and his arm, which you alluded to earlier. But the bat was always going to play. Twenty four year old ready for the one two swing and a miss. Some frustration for Huda as he's sent down on strikes for the third time tonight. But it's OK as a team. He and the Brewers still enjoy a nine run edge as we head to the seventh inning. We are ready for baseball. It's the 2015 World Series. Oh, this is our time. Yes, sir. This is our time. What we've been waiting for. Yes, sir. Gordon in the air to center. Back at the wall. This game is tied. Up two games to nothing. The Royals hope to go up three games to one over the Mets. That's in the right field. That ball's going to get down. Another run scores. It's 5 3. That one clear. Hold on. Power play. One more win. One more win. One more win. The Kansas City Royals a chance to clinch their first championship in 30 years. Runner coming home and Hosmer scores to tie the game. Swing and a line drive, base hit left field. And the Royals lead 3-2. Strike three call. It's over. They've done it. The Royals are World Series champions. I think it was the great Branch Ricky who once said, speed never goes into a slump. That cast powered by Google Cloud can appreciate in detail the speed of Adalberto Mondesi. First to home in under 10 seconds. See the major league average is 11 seconds there. And that wasn't even close. How about second to home? Seven and a half seconds, the sprint speed there at 29. Well above the major league average. This guy is in scoring position when he's on first base. <laughs> Among the fastest in major league baseball. How about that company? 
He fast. And he and the Royals also down here in the seventh inning. Justin Topa. Fresh arm out of Milwaukee's bullpen. So I watched Mondesi swing the bat, and I know we showed earlier he's got pop, right? I mean, he can hit the ball a long way. Yep. I like him best when he's hitting line drives and believe it or not ground balls. I know ground balls are like not a cool thing in the game. They are if you're Mondesi. This dude's hitting 373 when he hits the ball on the ground. And if he hits the ball in the air he's hitting a buck 19. I mean I would sit down and show him those numbers. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a stark contrast, and that's not going to show up for a lot of hitters like that. But for him, with his speed, hard hit by Mondesi, it's just smoked into right center field. An awkward around first base. He's going to have to hold up at second. Yeah, that's the line drive. Here's what I'm talking about with his swing here. When he gets a little bit underneath the ball, I mean, it's pretty much going to be an out. You saw the high finish there. This is the swing that I like, especially with runners in scoring business. Check out the difference in the finishes here. It's a much flatter swing for the ground ball, lower finish. When he gets into that high finish, I'd rather not see that if I were the Royals. And that last swing there, that line drive swing, that was a thing of beauty. Seventh double of 2020. And now Salvador Perez, three for three. Has driven in three. Double pair of singles also has a stolen base he's come around to score and off the injured list and off to the races for the veteran backstop and one of the horses of this team for many years now 14 for 24 in the month of September is Perez. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. The helmet Good popped catch. off of his head and he caught it. I like that. There you go. Jace Peterson has replaced Ben Gamble in right field. Okay. And we're on our third right fielder for Milwaukee. So that's the the bad news tonight for Craig Council and the crew. So finishing up on Mondesi, I, if I were Mike Matheny, I'd use the Whitey Herzog method that he used on Ozzie Smith. Cardinals traded for Ozzie from the Padres. Yep. He wasn't much of a hitter. And he kept hitting these pop-ups and fly balls, and Whitey Herzog said, listen, we're going to make a deal this year. Every time you hit a ball in the air, you owe me a dollar. <laughs> Every time you hit a ground ball, I owe you $3. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Nasty breaking ball. Whoa. So by the all-star break, Whitey Herzog owed Ozzy so much money they had to call off the bet. <laughs> Watch the break on this. You talk about some side-to-side -side movement. That's hard to keep the front side in. You see the jelly legs of Sal Perez. That ball's coming right at you as a right-handed hitter, and all of a sudden it just dives back into the zone. Great pitch. 106.8 miles per hour off the bat of Mondesi on his double, by the way, the leadoff double that has him on second now for Michael Franco. JP Morosi, we just saw that sorcery from Topa. Some fans are wondering, are we going to see the big guns out of Milwaukee's pen tonight? Well, Stephen, the Brewers hope not because uh, every out they get from Topa is an out they don't have to worry about getting from Devin Williams. And Josh Hader. Now they also have Corbin Burns, their ace, lined up for tomorrow. And this is all about with all the games they've got to play, conserving the pitching as much as possible. A huge doubleheader next weekend. All these innings, all these outs, they add up. And notably tonight, we talk so much usually at Miller Park about the sausage races and keeping pace in the sausage races. Now they've <laughs> got to keep pace here in the NL playoff picture because the Phillies already won today, leading in the second game of the doubleheader. The Cardinals have swept their doubleheader. The Reds won tonight 
behind Tyler Malley. So now they have Trevor Bauer tomorrow. Everybody else is winning. The Brewers must do it as well without hopefully from their standpoint using their two top relievers. Thanks so much JP. He's there at Miller Park for tonight's MLB game of the week live on YouTube. Montessi going throw down to third not in time. That's the way you steal third if you're down by five you say it's not a good play. Well if you've got that kind of speed and you are ninety nine point nine percent sure you can get the bag go take it. It's the only way you run there if you know you've got that bag in play. That was a good point by JP about the bullpen use for Craig Council in this game and that's why the play that Yardley made on Merrifield was so big to keep the lead at yeah. five rather than cut it to three because then the other pitchers become more in play. The 2 2. Topa says see ya back to back K's. Good run on the two seamer here it just gets below the bat of Franco. So I hear JP's report totally get it selfishly I want to see Devin Williams and Josh Hader. <laughs> I don't think anybody watching YouTube would like to as well. Two of the nastiest individual pitches in all of baseball. One by each of those guys a little chopper to third that's going to get Mondesi home for the fifth run of the oh no excuse me. That's going to do it in the seventh inning. It remains 9 4. We're stretching at Miller Park in search of some beer cheese. From Nationals Park here in Washington, D.C., it's the Brewers and the Nationals in game one of one game only. Max Scherzer on the mound to a standing ovation. The place is already popping. To right and well hit. That ball is out of here. A first inning two run shot by Grandal. Get up, get up! It is gone for Eric Thames. And the Brewers lead 3-0. This one is well hit, and it is gone! It's Trey Turner's first career postseason homer. Steven Swasburg on in relief for the first time in his career. A swing and a miss, he struck him out with a curveball. So three scoreless innings for Steven Strasburg. And Josh Hader trying to nail it down. Wide drive, base hit to right! Battle score two as the ball gets away. That's going to score three runs. It's Washington four, Milwaukee three. We go to the ninth inning. Daniel Hudson coming in. Ball game. And the Washington Nationals are LA bound. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. If you're watching this broadcast for the first time, one of the features is the live game commentary, and I'm looking at it right now. Good question, Dawson Wright. What's faster, Adalberto Mondesi or the speed of light? Kansas City Royals answered that question for you, Dawson. Mondi for sure, because they call him Steel Adalberto Mondesteel. <laughs> okay, next interactive poll question Tom Verducci and you can chime in on this one best reliever in baseball this season there are so many to choose from and honestly we threw all the best in a hat and picked out four these are what we got Williams Pomerantz Hendricks Green if you have another one to throw out there I'm expecting that one but do so in the live commentary section we'll shout them out as there's a one one grounder to steal the Berto Mondesteel. <laughs> One down in the seven. Well, you had me at Devin Williams. Yeah. What a story. What a rise. Oh, Meteoric. Goodness. That changeup that he throws is, is almost unhittable. Colton Wong at the first hit off his changeup this year the other day. Just a little seeing eye ground ball single to the opposite field. 
Okay, so I owe Orlando Arcia my full attention here. He had a bases loaded walk in the fourth, and then the, in the fifth, with two on, he was up, and I was rambling on about something else, and he's like, "Stop talking and watch my three-run homer." Ambush, ambush. So, Orlando, I'm locking in for you now. No one bounces away. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. What a sweet swing, Tom Verducci. You mentioned it. That's a first pitch breaking ball, and he was on it. 382 feet. It's a little below the major league average. They all count the same. You win a lot of games with a grand slam and a three run homer in the same game. That tends to work out in your favor. Oh, Arcia hit well again. Did you? Off the top of the wall, Gordon's going to play it. Arcia's got the arms up. Yeah, I think I got a round tripper. They're going to have to take another look, clearly. This ball looked like it hit the yellow line at the top and did not clear it. As close as you can come. Certainly everybody in Milwaukee's dugout is saying, let's go around. Another look slow-mo. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, usually you can tell by the way the ball bounces back. If it's going to hit the, bound, the back wall, it'll come back harder. That ball was scorched. Just missed his second career multi home run game. I mean, the physics of that. <laughs> Google Cloud StatCast, can you power that up for us? Goodness. Orlando Arcia providing some pop from the seven spot. One out double. Now Julio Urias in an infield single leg went out in the fifth. Only hit of the ball game. Hundred and seven point eight miles per hour off the bat of Arcia. That is the hardest hit ball this evening. So including his three run home run <laughs> Nottingham's grand slam and Yelich's solo shot is that double from the Brewer shortstop that reigns supreme. It's nine four in the bottom of the seventh the one one to Urias waved at. As he faces Scott Blewett and again congratulations to him and the Blewett family and everybody in his camp as he makes his big league debut. We've seen so many debuts here in 2020 as you would expect in a year like this. 60 game sprint as it's been called expanded rosters scheduling just so unique a lot of different talents a lot of different roads to the big leagues. Yeah I last time I checked after five weeks we had more players make their big league debut this year than made their debut in the entire 1990 season of course there are fewer teams but that's a six month season. Yeah. And how about the Marlins they've had 18 players make their major league debut this year and they're in playoff position. Well, it goes back to second. He is there. That, another one today for the Chicago White Sox Garrett Crochet who was yeah. a first round pick this year. First member of the 2020 draft class to debut and he's already pumping 101. So that's straight to the big leagues. Straight no minor the big leagues, leagues this year. No. So that's pretty cool. From Schaumburg to the show. I mean the Sox did it with Chris Sale. Now with Crochet. Could be a lefty weapon out of the bullpen. As the postseason nears. You know, I thought when they drafted him there was a possibility he'd come that quickly because it's no question he's got major league stuff and for Hitters to try to solve him coming out of a bullpen in a postseason game. They haven't seen him before. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Urias. Shallow left field. Nice play by Mondesi going back and reaching up to make the grab. <laughs> <laughs> the seven time gold glove winner, Alex Gordon, saying, yeah, nice play. So Jacob Nottingham and StatCast powered by Google Cloud, Tom. What a shot.
Again, first pitch breaking ball. This ball was crushed over 100 mile an hour exit velocity. I just like the fact that he was ready and reacted to that pitch. Just to wrap up the combo about quick roads to the big leagues, the Royals know that very well. Brandon Finnegan, 2014. That's of course, right. he did have time in the minors, but pitched in the College World Series and the Major League World Series in the same year. The health was an issue after that for Finnegan. Look at oh, boy. Cardboard cutouts. Hopefully the net saved them. Yep. Yeah, get that sticky stuff. Yeah. Live commentary section, the Milwaukee Brewers after Arcia's. They're all okay. Don't worry fine. about them. They're, they're smiling. They're, they're good. good. Yeah, they're good. Including the puck. Thank it, goodness for the netting. Yes. Game of inches, we suppose, say the Brewers. <laughs> Nottingham holds up. One and one. Nottingham was in that Chris Davis trade with Oakland. Which yeah they wouldn't make now because they moved Davis because he was an outfielder who really couldn't play the outfield and there was no DH in the National League. Yep. Broken bat. He's got more homers than crushed by the way. Yeah it's been a rough uh, last couple of years. Yep. Give me a new bat. That one doesn't work. It was too slick and now it cracked. Ah, <laughs> oh, there he is. Bob Euchre in the cheap seats at Miller Park. Is that Brian Kenny and Mad that Dog is. Russo? What? In the cheap, in the Euchre seats. Yeah. Matty V, Carlos Pena, Please, I mean, Please Act, I get. I don't see a Steven Nelson up there. No. <laughs> no, no one's wasting money on that. There's a strikeout from Blewett to end the seventh inning. We go to the eighth. The Royals are going to try and start a comeback. They're down five. Welcome to this little interstate squabble, otherwise known as the 1985 World Series. John Tudor delivers and he swings and misses. And that's hit down the line in left field, and the Cardinals lead it four to two. Well, this is a Cy Young performance tonight for Saber Hagen. Two two, got him. The Kansas City Royals. Rebound and beat the Cardinals. Becky. The Cardinals lead the World Series three games to one. Danny Jackson has just been brilliant. And Kansas City, here we come again. Oh. Little swimmer to the right side. Worrell races over to cover. The throw doesn't get him. Looks like he's out. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. To Motley for the title. The Kansas City Royals are the 1985 World Champions. Google Cloud is helping to power StatCast with massive amounts of data points to reveal new insights, taking you deeper into the game than ever before. Google Cloud is the official cloud technology 
of Major League Baseball. Hey, the Brewers YouTube channel is the number one place to find exclusive Brewers video content that includes highlights, interview series, behind the scenes footage, and more. Subscribe now at youtube.com slash Brewers. We're back into the eighth inning. MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Tom Verducci and J.P. Morosi on location at Miller Park. I'm Steven Nelson. Let's introduce you to Corey Knable. Back healthy. He's got a little bit of a new pitch as well. Yeah, you know, the stuff is coming back. He's always been a fastball, breaking ball pitcher. But as you mentioned, a new wrinkle this year, a changeup. He broke out five of them, of them his last time out. You may see one at some point here. And it's a pitch he's been working on, believe it or not, for six years. <laughs> Patience. He's 95 outside black. And he finally, last time out, said, you know what? I ought to try this in a game. Been throwing it in bullpens, playing catch with it. Well, that one's hit well. Left center field and coming over. Was Christian Yelich. And that was the changeup. You could see him actually the grip in the in the glove from the center field this camera. That tells you the kind of confidence. Now it's 9-4, so he's got some margin of error here, but early in the count to go to that pitch. Let's take another look. Yeah, it's not a bad pitch here. I mean it's left up a little bit. But he's got some good side to side run on it. A little bit of fade. Cable had his best outing. He's coming back from Tommy John surgery. Struck out six, seven batters he faced. All star in 2017, stall of 2019 after Tommy John surgery. And he was a part of that bullpen that was so dominant. It was him, it was Jeremy Jeffress, and Josh Hader. I mean, seven, eight, nine. In some way, shape, or form, it was tough to do damage. Yeah, because Hader is a guy you can use for more than three outs. Sometimes that group got the game the sixth. They close out games an inning earlier than a lot of back ends tend to take care of. Behind 3 0, O'Hearn taking the whole way. One out walk. Royals need base runners. They got one here. Don't want to get that guy up if you're Craig Council. No. Josh Hader. I keep him right there on the bench. You have a five run lead. Any time that, if the tying run certainly comes to the plate or probably even on deck. And then you'd have to get Hater up. Pinch hitter off the bench for KC. Yes, Nick Heath. What a talent, what a personality. Get to know the name and the game of this young man. Just more speed in Kansas City. So he's pinch hitting for Olivares. A little tardy on that fastball. If you're Knable, you have to read that swing. Stay with the same pitch. So it's one thing to say uh, he's fast. Some people want evidence. Uh, back up that statement. Okay. Okay. So 323 games in the minors for Nick Heath, 160 stolen bases. That's fast. So every other game, little chopper back to Knable. He goes to second for one. You're not going to get Heath going down the line. So as you forecast the future in Kansas City as they try and build back into a competitive window. Some interesting situations to monitor Tom. 
Yeah, some of those pieces left over from the 15 championship team. Got some decisions to make. Certainly Alex Gordon coming up after this season. Ian Kennedy, that five-year deal about to run out. But when you think about this Kansas City team, I, I think you have to be excited about their starting pitching, Stephen. You get three in the rotation right now, 25 and younger. Yep. And more coming. One of those recent first round pick Brady Singer who's starting to come on here his last couple outings. Bubich. Brad Keller is throwing the ball well. He's been season. their ace. Yeah. There you see him. And Hernandez another 23 year old. Drafted Asa Lacey who's going to get here soon. Oh yeah. Four top 100 prospects. I want to say for Kansas City right now according to MLB pipeline and that is why Mike Matheny manager for the Royals told us earlier this afternoon the pieces are here. We have the pieces. They just got to keep coming to us. Well they made a commitment a couple of years ago in the draft that they were going with college pitchers. Quicker path to the big leagues. Probably more certainty than big high school arms. In terms of development. And so far it's worked out well. Lopez. Foul ball. More on the blue chips. Wearing royal blue. From the top pitching prospects. And look at all those 2018s at the bottom there, the year yep. they were drafted. That's the commitment you're talking about. Not to mention Bobby Witt, young shortstop draft pick out of high school. His ETA be a couple years from now, but certainly looks the part. Prospects are certainly. I mean, this game is so hard. No matter where you're rated on a prospect scale, it's hard to get here. It's hard to stay here. It is, but generally, you know, a player like Bobby Witt Jr. Your dra position player drafted that high with pedigree There's a really good chance he's going to be an impact player. The foul ball from Lopez. Yeah, Witt. Number two pick in 2019. Versus son of 16 year big league veteran Bobby Witt. And again they're they're showing this year they have shown flashes of being a problem. And right now we're in the midst of one of those stretches. Casey's won seven of eight. And try and spoil this postseason push for Milwaukee. Got out to an early lead for nothing, but then Milwaukee roared back. I mean, seemingly out of nowhere, they weren't doing anything against Danny Duffy through the first three frames. And then came the fourth. Now we're in the top of the eighth. Milwaukee leads nine to four. In this MLB game of the week live on YouTube. And Craig Council, manager of the Milwaukee Brewers. Sounds like he and his coaching staff got a lift today as Pat Murphy tries to get healthier after his scare earlier this season. Continue to send our best to Murph and his family. There's a two out walk for. Boy, how about that? Lopez. Up by five, two outs, three two count to the number nine hitter, and Knable throws a curveball. <laughs> wow. And the reason I'm saying wow is now you're bringing Whit Merrifield to the plate. Yep. One swing right here, we got ourselves a real tight ball game. Oh, boy. I mean, Nicky Lopez generally is not going to take you a yard. I mean, you got to end the inning right there. Yeah, made the cut commenting on the live chat interesting choice with that pitch selection. By the way Knable is going to move on and focus on the leadoff man. In Merrifield. Got one hit tonight. By the way the. KC record. Oh. And wow. This is 
both of the big guns now up. Yeah, I, I was wrong. I thought it would take the tying run in the on deck circle. Not quite there yet, but 10 days left in the season. Milwaukee on the outside of the 18 postseason bracket right now in the National League. But that's another reason. I didn't like it in the first place, but that's another reason to dislike that 3 2 curveball to Nicky Lopez. Because that got Hader up in the bullpen. And, and you, you almost have to use him once you get him up. Right. And Knable coming off Tommy John surgery, the, the pitch count getting up there for him. And he wanted him to have a clean inning. Get. Yeah. Uh -oh. Foul ball hit Nottingham. Let's go back to that pitch to Lopez, Tom. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy throwing 95 96. And he, again, the five run lead, number nine hitter, you got to go after him. It can't be putting a walk into play with a curveball there. You know, he had missed with the changeup for the second ball. I get that. But at 3 2, it was time to be aggressive. Two outs, two strikes, two on Merrifield with a foul ball. He got away with that one. And that was left up in the zone. Not quite as sharp in this outing. Pitch number 25 for Canable on tap. Airfield on the ground to short charging Arcia bare hand throws the first not in time the bases are loaded. And now Craig Council's thinking about it. Arcia did everything he could here. This is a really good play to even make it close but. Merrifield, especially on that swing, you're as a right-handed hitter, reaching for the curveball, you're one step toward first base, even as you finish your swing. So another multi-hit game for Merrifield, eight of his last nine. And a hot hitter at the plate. Adalberto Mondesi. Makes first pitch inside for ball one. Four home runs, 11 ribbies his last 10 games. Big spot in the top of the eighth. Chopped to the right side. Yuta over on the first. And Knable and the crew escape the bases loaded jam. We're going to the bottom half. Milwaukee up 9-4, and they will be game of the week live on YouTube. We are underway here at Target Field. And we are set for Reds baseball. Swing and a miss, he got him. That was a great play. I didn't think he was going to get it. That's a gold glove caliber play. Got the heart of a champion, most definite. Better be weird. Down for the count, but I bounce back with a vengeance. I'm bad. The stock is with a deep blast. Welcome to the Reds. Max Kepler on the first pitch of the season goes deep. Nelson Cruz continues to be a bully. Up and out of the strikes, and it doesn't matter to Castellanos. A two-run homer for Buxman. Suarez is three for three. And gone. He's got another one. And the Reds sweep the doubleheader. what a walk-off winner looks and sounds like in 2020. And walk it off Joey Votto.
We're back. It's the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. The later stages of this one in Milwaukee. Coming up, one more. Cincinnati at Minnesota Friday, the 25th of September. First pitch slated for 8.10 p.m. Eastern. I'll be with John Smoltz, J.P. Morosi, driving up to the Twin Cities. Coverage begins with our pregame show at 7.30 p.m. Let's check in on our poll results. The best reliever in baseball this season. And it goes to Devin Williams in that filthy changeup, Tom Verducci. I cannot disagree with that. He's thrown 191 changeups this year and given up one hit. I mean, that's ridiculous. Is that good? <laughs> that's really good. I think it's really good. The Milwaukee Brewers in the live commentary saying the voters confirming what we already knew. This guy might get some votes too. Oh, yes. Josh Stallman is in the game. You want some gas? He's going to give it to you. Seriously, he's exciting to watch on the bump. He is 2020 season for Stallman. Second round pick out of Azusa Pacific APU stand up in 2015. 30 pitches of 100 miles per hour. Or faster. It's the second most in baseball. He's averaging 98.1 on his fastball. <laughs> Just get warmed up. Yep. By the oh, way, his curve's pretty good too. I was going to say the exact same thing. Is you protect against a hundred, and he's got that nasty, big overhand hook at almost 20 miles an hour below fastball speed. 60% whiff rate on that pitch. Count one and one to Avi Garcia, the leadoff batter for Milwaukee. Might be a good time to break out that hook right here. Garcia had a pretty good pass at that fastball, fouled it straight back. That's easy guess too from Stalmont. Yeah. Not a lot of effort behind it. A strike away from putting away Garcia. Misses high at 99. There is one other active play in the big leagues from Azusa Pacific University. I know you're an East Coast guy. When I ask you who it is. Stephen Vogt. Yeah. Tom Reducci. Ding, ding, ding. No hesitation. I, I get out of the Eastern time zone once in a while. <laughs> that is true. That is true. He will be soon going down for postseason coverage, of course. So safe travels, Tom. It's been a pleasure working with you. Oh, there it is. 99. Right down the pipe. Speaking of <laughs> Chen down the middle. You be the umpire here. This is on the 21st of August. I don't know what one would be looking for here well, to make that any watch, better. What's Josh? He's saying, was that up? And then he shook his head like, really? Jeremy Rehack behind home plate. Didn't like it. <laughs> that is quality contact. That's hook. Yeah, That's comes. unfair. But it's tough to hit. Probably tough to call as an umpire. Whew. 100 round the middle. Strike one to Christian Yelich. Blank, you missed it. Easy guess. I think we can call that Beer Chiefs. I like it. Would be better the if he Milwaukee's pitched for best. the best. Yeah, it'd be better if he pitched for the home team, probably. But for the sake of this broadcast and not letting a bit die, that's what we're going with here. Bottom of the eighth inning, Stalmont versus Yelich. JP Morosi has a little bit more for the folks at home on Stalmont. Well, Josh Stallmont once told my friend Joel Goldberg of Fox Sports Kansas City that earlier in life he had contemplated becoming an archaeologist. If so, he would have been the first archaeologist I've ever met that could throw a fastball like that. <laughs> Did you ever see Indiana Jones pitch, though, JP? <laughs> he had a good cutter. I, I have not, so sources can't confirm <laughs> that that's actually the case. Matt Baker gets the credit for that joke. I'm not even going to try and front and steal that. That was that was quick. Thanks, Bake. 
Shaking him off is Stalmont. Now he's got his preferred pitch selection. The former MVP, the 2 1. Swing and a miss. That is just firm. This guy was a starter up until 2018. Always had a big arm, but his stuff has really played up in a bullpen role. It's always a quality arm or several in the back end of the Kansas City pen. Yelich takes the 2 2. That was a mistake. Strike three. Hey, the producer of tonight's game is Michael Trainer, director Jason Lobb. Ms. Bracey is our tape producer, associate director Carmine Arpaio, graphics coordinators Matt Olbao, Brian Yu, technical manager Tony G, Jeff Hendrick, our TD, Caitlin Peterman, managing production, and also a special shout out to Jason Seacamp celebrating a birthday today. If you like some of the content that we've been throwing your way in this MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube broadcast, you can thank Jason. One oh one. Now I think he's warm now. Well it, it really is a good illustration of what extreme velocity does. The margin of error is so much bigger that Sal Perez it doesn't really matter where he sets up. You just let this guy throw to the middle of the zone and let the fastball go. I mean he's not trying to dot this up. Check out these impressive numbers. Statcast powered by Google Cloud the average four seamer. I mentioned a tick above 98 miles per hour. That's second in baseball behind. Probably the best pitcher in baseball. Jacob DeGrom. His peak velocity 102.2. It's one of the five hardest four seamers in the league this year. And that curveball. You can't stop talking about it. I know people fall in love with the heat. But when you got a curve like that, you've got to get its ink. That drop, I mean my goodness. 55 inches of drop. What are we doing? And again, what's so impressive to me is that he's getting to triple digits without a lot of effort in the delivery. It's a very athletic, smooth delivery. Simple. And he got outside of his delivery right there. It's the first time I saw him really try to get a little more. It's a good job by him. Step off the back of the mound and regroup. Chase Peterson, the third different Brewer in this three spot, draws a two out walk. Brian, Ryan Braun started the game, had two singles, and after the second one in the fourth, left with lower back tightness. Ben Gamble came into the game, hit two doubles, and then he left the game. Now Peterson's aboard, so heck of a day for everybody there. Right field getting it done. Three right fielders on base every time. Jed Jerko almost perfect today in terms of getting on base. One for two with a pair of walks. Yeah, so Hader's hot at this point. So he's yeah, coming. Yeah, I mean, you say, why is he up? It's a nine to four game. Once he's up and warm, Craig Council gets him into the game. How do you think Counts feels about this? I mean, I mean like the got... fact that he's got a win to protect. Hasn't pitched since Monday. Get him some work. And listen, at this point, what are you saving him for? You're not in the postseason. You're fighting for that. So you got to make sure you get as many wins as you can. Exactly. The way I figure it, they have to go at least seven and four in the last 11 games. And it's been noticeable, the usage of Hader out of the pen this year, hasn't it? Like just trying to keep him as fresh as possible. And I thought this would be a good matchup. Stelmont's fastball against Jerko who likes to hit high fastballs. And if there's one time to throw that big hook, this would be the count. He's got that club in the bag. Will he bust it out here for the 0-2 pitch to Jerko? He does not. Goes gas, misses outside. 
So we talked about the number of 100 plus mile per hour pitches he's thrown this year. He's talking about Stallmont, second most in all of baseball behind Bruce Star Gratterall. So, Sports Gaming Universe in the comment section, you are on it. Stark Raving Sports Stallmont is a Rapsodo's dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Well, there it was. He just missed it. You know, the only thing I see with Josh, and I talk about him being really efficient and smooth with his delivery, the ability to repeat that delivery every pitch, at least tonight, not quite there. We've seen him get out of his delivery a couple of times, just pull the ball to glove side. Let's see if he challenges him with a fastball. He does, and Jerko went down to get it. So Peterson will go first to third. Thanks to the two out knock from Jerko, his second single of the game. As you pointed out, Stephen, this pitch is down. Elite fastballs, easier to hit when they're down. You actually have to be a little quicker with the barrel when the ball is up. And your bat is working down anyway. Jerko, as I said, really good fastball hitter, didn't miss that one. Yeah, entered today with a slugging percentage. Get to close to 1170 on fastballs. That's good. What? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Keston Huda, one for four, a single, and three punch outs. The 24 year old who debuted last May and then went on a tear. 84 games in 2019 at 19 homers. 303 average, slug 570. Batting average down nearly 100 points this year. The OPS about 200. Well, you saw Black join Hader in the bullpen. They might be a hit away from using Black instead of Hader right here. Mm -hmm. This is 3 0. Oh. Got a chance to talk to the Brewers' second baseman, Keston Huda, the last time the Brewers were on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube during our pregame show. And of course, the two of us share an immense amount of pride in being Japanese Americans from Southern California. We talked about representing for our community as he takes the 3 0 -oh high and draws a two out walk to load the bases. But he said there are not a ton of Asian Americans in the game. People can play Asian born players like Ichido with Asian Americans like Keston, Kurt Suzuki, Tommy Edmond. This goes on. And he wants to show I'm not the biggest guy, I'm not the tallest guy, I ain't the fastest guy, but I made it here and you can make it too. So a mound visit for Josh Stallman, who started this eighth inning. I mean, Kekwa. It's like, okay, this is going to be one, two, three. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good night. But some trouble since then. A walk from Jace Peterson, a single by Jerko, and another walk by Huda. Yeah, well, he's got some walks in his game right now. And from what I see, Nelly, I'm watching his head when he delivers the ball to the plate. When he keeps his head on the plate, that's when his command is much better. When it starts to drift to the side and he opens up a little early, that's when he's pulling the baseball. So that's just a mechanical thing. He will iron out just to repeat his delivery. But right now he's been in and out of his delivery and therefore having some control issues. 16 walks in 20 and two thirds innings pitch for Stom. So we love the stuff. We do. He's going to try and rein things in moving forward. So now bases loaded for Tyrone Taylor. This is inside ball one. Taylor 0 for tonight. Now it looks like he's trying to take something off that fastball to find the zone. Offers at the one oh that was also inside. Foul. Taylor, Taylor actually got called up at the end of last season 
He actually had interviewed with a delivery company. Figured he wasn't going to get called up to the big leagues. And the next day, the Brewers called and said, uh, can you come to the big leagues? <laughs> we need you up here. Big loss of the delivery company. Yeah, he wasn't. He said the interview went well, but he wasn't sure if he was going to get the position <laughs> or not. It was like some overnight stocking job. Oh, my goodness. I don't, I, and instead, I, he goes to the big leagues, goes to the show. Uh, it's just special. That's why you feel romantic about this game that we love so much. Stories like that. Oh, this guy was drafted nine years ago. Nine seasons he's put in for the Brewers. Nine seasons in the minors. Nine. Yeah, he's played almost 800 games in the minor leagues. Gosh, talk about persistence, perseverance. Jammed on the 1-2, 97 miles per hour. Look out! Stomont and Franco taps all around because you know what? The ball ended up in the glove and the inning is over. Here it comes. Josh Hader, you get to watch the lefty out of the pen when the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube returns. Make fun of me with my ball glove. Uh -oh. with a toe pick. <laughs> Dugout loves it. He tips his cap. Keston here gave him a 10. Sometimes you just catch your cleat. Yeah. Kind of spun off. That's a nice roll right there. That's well done. Fly ball to right on the first pitch. Eaton near the line and in the corner and has room. And Eaton just made a play. Nicely done. 20 minutes ago, Johnny Cueto came out. He just didn't. Like the music that was on. He said it was putting him to sleep. Well, he's listening to Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra, and all of a sudden he's going, No, 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 I'm putting me to sleep. And then to accentuate the point, he was like, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm taking the schnooze. Look at that thing spinning. Dug a hole. <laughs> Look at that ball. I mean, he took it right out of the cup of his back and sheared the ball. Wow. Boy, Hobbs would have been proud of that. Jim. Yeah. Don't miss any action during this season, so follow MLB on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube for highlights and oh so much more. MLB on social. Introducing MLB Film Room, powered by Google Cloud. Search 3.5 million videos. Again, 3.5 million is the number. So you can create custom reels. You watch the videos, you create the reel, and then you share it for the world to see. Only at MLB.com slash Film Room. I already heard from our commentary section live in the chat. We got one of Booth Bonzer. Who would be the most obscure player you'd want to create a reel of I'll let you think about it for a second as we say hello to Josh Hader the dominant lefty out of the Milwaukee pen now it's it's unusual and I get it we're down to the last week and a half of the season but Josh Hader has not come into a game with more than a three run lead this season as you mentioned he's had a few days off so he's strong but up five to see Hader in the game. Trick Council is hoping that he doesn't get extended this inning in pitch count so he can use him a little more often. So if we rewind to last inning. We were talking about keeping Hader more fresh in right. 2020. Only one time this year has he been brought in, has he been called upon to record four or more outs. Gross on that 1 1, now 1 and 2. Compared to 23 times in 2019. Salvador Perez, three for four, was retired for the first time back in the eighth inning. Well, Hader has come in once this year with the team down by one. Everything else is either a tie or a save situation. 
one two gets away from him. You see a lot more of those this year. A lot more sliders. Josh Hader. Actually I love that it shows evolution. You know, just stick to what got you there. You got to evolve and adapt. Two two fouled back. That's still the go to pitch though. Oh yeah. If he's in a spot where he has to get a hitter. The elevated fastball. It can't go wrong. The opponent's numbers against the slider. I know they're not good. It's one for 25 or something. Against that pitch. I'm talking about the slider but yeah I mean. The, even if the velo is off a touch the deception that he throws it with. And you know that he's got it. You know what you're expecting facing Josh Hader and it's still just. <laughs> oh so hard. It's a big pitch it's right here. Needs to throw a strike. He does and Perez gives it a ride to right center field. At the wall leaping he'll watch it go. Salvador Perez goes bridge off Hader and it's nine to five. And Steven the reason I said it was a big pitch was because you don't want to start running up the pitch count. Of Josh Hader in a five run game. And Sal Perez just I mean he's not missing anything these days. I mean another planet he's on right. I mean he's well over 500 since he came off the IL all this month in September. It's a great effort by Taylor in center. Four hits for Salvi. Six time in his career he's done that for the first time since 2016. Don't forget the stolen base. They too. cannot forget the fifth career stolen base. He'll be the first to remind you of that. So updating the math he's now 15 for his last 26. Wow. Salvador Perez. Eight of those hits have gone for extra bases. Made the cut saying come back in the chat. Royals fans certainly herps, hope so. One and two the count now. And listen I'm not saying I'm just saying. But Michael Franco. Oh, well now I can't say it because he struck out swinging. What I was going to say. Was that a bunch of his RBIs have come in the seventh inning or later? Let's go to Don, to JP right now, as we watch Josh Hader bounce back after the home run. Well, Stephen Brewers GM David Stearns was on MLB Network Radio recently. He was asked about the possibility of Josh Hader being traded at the deadline. He said there was never really any serious conversation. Of course, the Brewers not looking to trade him. But also he said they have to listen to offers that come in and the conversations that happen. And Stephen I would compare the Brewers and the way they've been able to cultivate relievers over the last several years perhaps being similar to the Cleveland Indians with their starting pitching. And of course the Indians have moved on a number of their starters. You do have to wonder if at some point now haters got three years left after this one before free agency. But whether it's Williams or Hader think about the number of players they could get back and what that would do to change perhaps their lineup or rotation in the future. Thank you JP. Dude what do you think he's under team control for three more seasons. Well listen I don't think you put anybody off limits. I mean you listen to any offer that's out there doesn't mean you're trying to move him. How about that swing from Dozier sword. But he's not just difficult to hit he's difficult to catch. <laughs> I mean, Nottingham almost broke his thumb on the first fastball. I mean usually you'll see a slider really handcuff a catcher but his fastball is so firm. One two nobody's Strike hitting that three. he got Franco on the same pitch. Two punchies in a row for Hader. Elevated fastball. I mean you might know it's coming but it's another story to actually hit it. 
So yes, I, I would be prepared for more talk this offseason about a, a potential, and I say potential, mm. hater trade. It's kind of a difficult guy to talk about an extension with when you think about closers. When we know that velocity is a declining skill, not many guys retain their velocity. It's such a volatile Absolutely. position role. Bubba Starling coming to the game. Another one of these six first round picks on the Royals roster. Royals down to their final two strikes. Down by four here in the top of the ninth of this MLB game of the week live on YouTube. We have a half hour post game show coming up as well. So if you if you really want to party on this Friday night, then you can hang out with us. Well, I, I've seen this movie before in September, Stephen. Milwaukee Brewers under Craig Council. This is what they do. They get the starting pitcher out of the game quickly. Six relief pitchers have been used by Milwaukee. No runs. Well, now one run allowed. Hmm. Outgetters. That's what he calls his pitchers. What's my role? Your role is to get out, son. <laughs> I like that all the different terms used to describe pitchers these last couple of years. Bulk guy, Bulk. setup guy, Bulk. eighth inning guy. <laughs> That's <laughs> twice now. That. God. He's gonna forget about Hader icing down. Nottingham's gonna have to ice down his hand after the game. And he's probably thinking, Josh, dude, I just hit another home run, I hit a grand slam. I kind of <laughs> need these wrists uh, to that do more damage. Catcher will tell you that that hurts so much. It bends that thumb back. The three-two from Hader to Starling, strike three, three strikeouts in a row to punctuate. A 9-5 Milwaukee win. That's how the Brewers roll. The home run ball was definitely in play for the Brew crew. And bullpen, six relievers combining to allow one run to make sure those big innings back to back in the fourth and the fifth stood up. Milwaukee needed a W. They got a W. Let's start our post game show after this conclusion. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Post game show gets going as this game has come to a conclusion. Expecting Jed Jerko of the Milwaukee Brewers to join us in just a second. Tom Verducci, Stephen Nelson, JP Morosi has been on site for us all day. Any thoughts coming into your head right uh, now? I, listen, I, I think that's obviously this time of year everything's a big win, but for the Brewers to fall behind four nothing early in this game and. I said at the time, Stephen, I thought they were a little flat-footed, a little flat, you know, weren't sharp defensively. Had some injury issues with Braun coming out of the game. But my goodness, after the, it was like Kristen Yelich's home run was that alarm clock going off. That was your wake-up <laughs> call, Milwaukee Brewers, and boy, did they answer. No doubt. I mean, that inning basically started a whole new ball game. Like, the Brewers showed up starting in the fourth got going with a Christian Yelich home run. Ryan Braun followed with a single Jerko walk due to single after a fly out Taylor he walked. Bases loaded scored a second run thanks to Orlando Arcio who later had a three run shot. And then Jacob Nottingham with a game breaker his first career grand slam giving Milwaukee the lead and the Brewers never looked back. Now we are looking down at Miller Park and welcoming in our special guest here on the post game show Jed Jerko Jed first of all congrats on the W get a couple knocks tonight gone on base two more times via the walk. I'm wondering if you can give us your perspective on that fourth inning when things really erupted for that lineup. 
Yeah, we just had good at bats. Um, you know, one after another. Yelly hit the, you know, obviously hit the big homer to get it started. Brownie good at bats. Uh, took what we got and just uh, passed the baton on to the next guy, and it just kind of piled up. Yeah, t take us through those at bats too, Jeb, because I know Kansas City was real careful throwing you fastballs. I mean, you were very disciplined. You also had home runs on first pitch breaking balls from Nottingham and Arcia. So tell me about the approach tonight. Oh, I'm just taking what they give us, to be honest. Uh, you know, I'm more than happy just to get on base. And uh, obviously, uh, Naughty put a, a huge swing on, put, give us that lead, and we never looked back. You know, RC, I had a couple, couple great at bats later in that game, also to kind of put it out of reach. You know, Jed, with where you guys are at in the standings, we talked to Brent Suter about this during the game. We know that up and down the lineup, there are guys who feel maybe individually they're not where they want to be. But as a team, you're right there battling for a spot. So what conversations are you guys having with each other, one, to keep each other up and also in this postseason fight? Uh, I think at this point of the season, you kind of put your individual stats aside. And, uh, you know, like you said, we're right there in the thick of it. Uh, all, all that other individual stuff don't mean nothing if we don't get in. So uh, we're all pushing together, uh, you know, doing whatever we can to get in this thing. Hey, Jed, I know, I know things started rolling once Christian hit that home run. He's had some really good swings this week. Tell me what you're starting to see from Yelly this week. Um, I think he's just getting himself in a little bit better position to hit. Uh, you know, not, not uh, I think he was stuck in between a little bit, uh, you know, maybe even last week. But, uh, you know, his swing looks really in tune right now, and uh, hopefully we can ride him through the rest of this thing. Jed, level with me. Right now, with the race happening as it is, a lot of teams in the thick of it, how much scoreboard and standing watching are you doing after a game? Uh, I'm looking to see who wins every single game. I mean, yeah. I, some people say they don't check and they just worry about us, but uh, I think that's bull crap. I'm yeah. checking every single game, <laughs> seeing what people are doing. I'm with you, man. Totally get it. Listen, we appreciate uh, the time that you've given us here on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube post game show. Congrats again on the victory and uh, best of luck down the stretch. You guys are right there. All uh, right. Th thanks, y'all. Y'all have a go. You too. I I love that. I don't like that honesty, Tom. I love I it. Love, love that an honesty. honest player. Oh, my gosh. And you know what? So often, people, fans, media especially, but everyone's like, God, I don't want the cliche answers. I want more emotion. I want more reality. Be real with us. And then when players do give you that, then it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. But I, not, not, not us and not there with Jed Jerko. He's absolutely looking at the standings because, look, at this point, you have to know where you're at. And they know by now already that Cincinnati took care of business, that Philadelphia took care of business and they have to keep the ball rolling. They have to keep it rolling. In some ways, they know, also know they control their own destiny with all the games they have coming up with the Cardinals still and the Reds. So it kind of is in their hands. They have to take care of business this weekend as well. But as I said, Nelly, I think this was a typical Brewers September game. You know, six relief pitchers hold the, the Royals in check. They had the home runs. We know they're going to punch out once in a while with that offense, but they've got firepower in that offense, especially now. And I'm telling you, this could be the difference maker in the next week and a half if Christian Yelich is all the way back. And he looked to be back in this one. If you missed any of the action, we got you covered right now with some highlights. The leadoff man for Kansas City, Whit Merrifield. We got action right away. Whit Merrifield not wasting any time getting on the base pass. Well, that's exactly what I had penciled in for Whit. You know, he does use the whole field, but early in counts, he looks for the ball in, and that's what you have to do on Hauser. First two batters reaching for KC, and Salvador Perez salivating with this opportunity. Pitch number 15 of the first, the 2 2. Lifted into right center field. That finds the fairway in the gap. Merrifield rounds third, will trot home. Monesey turning on the burners. He'll score. 2 0 Royals. It's too good of a hitter to leave that pitch there. And with Mondesi running, we talked about the pressure he puts on outfielders, not just infielders. This man, Alex Gordon. Ball down, runner going out to second base. Throw gets away. And Salvador Perez will touch home plate. 3-0 Kansas City. All right, Salvador Perez at a two-run double in the first inning. Up again with a runner in scoring position. Perez breaks the bat. Goes into left center field. Mondesi going to turn home. 4-0 KC. And Salvador Perez, you cannot stop him right now. Even when he breaks his bat, it's just everything's falling for him. This is a good two-seamer, but 
Perez just muscles it. Pretty much the competition he's done the most damage against Yelich this year against left-handed pitchers. So something's got to give here. Maybe it happens with the 2-0. Yelich gets into one. Left center field. Going back is Olivares at the wall. It is gone. Solo home run for Christian Yelich in Milwaukee is on the board. Telling you, Stephen, I've seen it all this week. The 2019 version of Yelich, we're seeing more of it. Again, better stride direction. All right, Jacob Nottingham, what do you got? Base is still jam. Nottingham turns on one to left field. Did you? Grand slam. The Brewers have taken the lead. Well, I said the high fastball was the way to go, but Duffy figures I'll start him with a breaking ball. Get ahead, breaking ball, and instead, Nottingham just doesn't concede that pitch. It's a great reaction. Hit off the fastball, react to spin. Hey, look at where things are now. Oh, that ball's hit well into left center field. And that one gets over the wall. A three-run shot for Orlando Arcia. Nine to four, Milwaukee. He says, you stop talking about my teammates like that. We can hit the ball just fine. First pitch breaking ball again. We saw Nottingham do that for the grand slam. And then we entered the eighth inning, Tom Perducci. Yeah, it was Corey Knable on the mound here, and this got really interesting. This loaded the bases and got Josh Hader up in the bullpen with Milwaukee holding the big lead at 9-4. And the cable Knable gets out of it, getting Mondesi on the ground ball. Yeah, one of the hotter hitters in Casey's order retired with the bases loaded. And here he comes. Josh Hader. Tried to challenge Salvador Perez. He lost said challenge. As most pitchers do these days. <laughs> he has been red hot this month. Fastball. Not quite as up as Josh Hader wanted it but where Sal Perez liked it. Perez making his case for player of the week in the American League, but Hader responded after the home run, struck out Franco, Dozier, and then Bubba Starling. Three straight Ks to end the ball game. 9-5 is how we finished up at Miller Park. Yelly, two for five, hit his 11th home run. Ryan Braun and Ben Gamble both left the game after going two for two. Braun two for two with two singles, lower back stiffness. Then Ben Gamble came in two for two with a couple of doubles. He left the game. Jace Peterson came on. So that is something to follow up here post game with Craig Council and his club. If we get any official word, we'll pass that along to you here on our post game show. Tom Verducci, Stephen Nelson here inside Studio 42 at the MLB Network Studios in Secaucus, New Jersey. Ryan Braun has been a fixture in a Brewer uniform for a long, long time. One of the more productive careers that franchise has ever seen. And he's been playing well, swinging it well in a lineup that hasn't had a ton of guys doing that. So to see him go down like that, Tom, again, lower back stiffness, maybe he's back, maybe he's okay, but still, I'm concerned. Yeah, and I'm sure the Brewers are. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But he did stay in the game after that awkward swing. Clearly he was compromised. We saw him stretching throughout the second inning out in the outfield but wasn't quite right, finally had to come out. He did have two hits, as you mentioned, came out after the second hit. This was just, you know, kind of a brain cramp, just tossing the ball in. That allowed Mondesi to scoot up another 90 feet, but this was the second hit. He had to come out after this one with Gamble replacing him, but because he's been swinging it so well, and because, as Craig Council said, this guy loves the big games. Yeah. I mean, he has had so many big moments for this franchise, especially down the stretch of pennant races that Obviously, they're holding their breath a little bit that this is just something of a day-to-day -day issue. But his replacement, Ben Gamble, came in and replaced him and had two hits of his own, but you saw a little giddy-up in the stride there on his first double. He remained in the game and then had another double, and this was even more compromised in terms of his stride. And he did have to come out after this. He checked on him and Obviously, you know, you got to be careful that what may be a strain doesn't turn into something that shuts him down for the season at this point. So 
two physical issues that bear watching, but the Braun one really, because as you mentioned, he's swinging it so well, that could be a big one. And he's not a young buck anymore, 36 years old for Ryan Braun. By, by the way, hitting a baseball is hard enough when you're 100% healthy. The fact that he got two knocks in a game like that with your back not working, hats off to Ryan Braun. And again, hope he and Ben Gamble are both feeling okay. Let's go out to our third member of our team, J.P. Morosi, who's been with us all night long in Milwaukee on location. J.P., thanks for your reports. What do you have for us now? Well, Stephen and Tom, always a pleasure to work with both of you. Uh, no word yet on Ryan Braun's status for tomorrow, but I agree with you and Tom. A really key question for the Brewers at this hour. Of course, this time of year, it's all about math. And right now the Brewers are one game back of a playoff spot, and they have eight games coming up, three with the Reds, five with the Cardinals against the two teams they're chasing. But uh, I, I love Jed Jerko's honesty as well earlier on uh, in our postgame show. And unfortunately for Jed, the news isn't good on the scoreboard watching department. So the news hmm. good for the Brewers here tonight, but everywhere else, not so good because everybody won that really matters for them at least once. And some won twice. Uh, the, the Cardinals won twice. The Reds won a, a key game there against the White Sox. Jesse Winker, a hero there for the Reds in that game, a three-run homer. The Phillies, we talk about MVPs playing like it, Stephen, at this time of year. And Yelich certainly got the Brewers going here. How about Bryce Harper tonight? In a doubleheader, four for six, four RBI, three runs scored. You think he wants to get back to the World Series or back to the playoffs and maybe avenge what his old teammates in D.C. did last year? So you've got a highly motivated Bryce Harper. Dylan Carlson comes up from the minor leagues. The alternate training site hits a huge three-run homer for the Cardinals. So a lot of heroes tonight in the NL playoff race. Uh, fortunately for the Brewers, some of them here, but also all around the major leagues as well. That's been the case. And again, tomorrow, the key thing, why it was important for the Brewers to get this win, they've got Corbin Burns, their Cy Young candidate, their comeback player of the year candidate on the mound tomorrow uh, opposing Chris Bubich for the Royals. So again, Stephen and Tom, always a pleasure. Always love working with you both. A great game tonight for the Brewers. Send it back to you. Thank you so much, JP. Be sure to drive safely. You're going all the way around the country and Midwest all season <laughs> long. You've been racking up the rental car miles. So, again, be safe on the roads, and we'll talk to you down the line, my friend. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it. You're talking about uh, Bryce Harper real quick. I mean, he talked about his performance today, and that was after he hit two baseballs two miles yesterday <laughs> in that heartbreaker against the Mets, Tom Verducci. But, I, listen, this is why – the, I would say the vast majority of baseball fans were so jacked up for 2020 because of this postseason format. It brings teams, fan bases, market cities, cities that, and places that maybe didn't feel like they had a chance coming into the year. They're in it right now with 10 or less or 10 or fewer games to go. Uh, bingo. I mean, go back to the trade deadline. What team went out and got the best position player available? The Marlins. The Marlins, <laughs> right? That doesn't happen in a quote-unquote normal season, and I'm a big fan of chaos. Yes. So I root Dial for these up. scrambles that we're seeing here in the National League, and I hope and I do think it will come down to the last day, which, by the way, might be Monday, not Sunday. Sunday the 27th is the last day, but the Cardinals still have those two games in Detroit to make up if needed. I think they will be. You talked about that, and so did JP there. Five more games between Milwaukee and St. Louis. That's the season for those two teams right there. If they stay on the track right now, they're on a collision course for that five-game set. It's going to decide their fate. Yeah, and I think that's a good thing, right? It's yeah. another good benefit of this schedule that we have. It was done for pandemic reasons to kind of limit travel, but we're seeing these interdivision or intradivisional games really decide playoff spots at the end. So it's another byproduct of having more teams in the postseason. You have more teams in the race. So the scoreboard watching that Jed was talking about, <laughs> there's a lot to follow. More so, I think there's been more competitive, meaningful September games than ever before because we have an expanded postseason. I want to hit you on one more thing. If you are one of the top seeds in the National League and you know you're going to be in, but you don't know who you're going to be playing, and you're looking at these teams on the fringe like a St. Louis or Milwaukee, which one do you look at and which one do you have the most fear in facing in a shortened series, Milwaukee or St. Louis? 
That's a really good question because now I look at Milwaukee the way Corbin Burns has emerged and think of them that they can beat you with starting pitching as well as the bullpen. It's always been Milwaukee can beat you with all these different relievers. Right. We saw that tonight. But the way Woodruff now and Burns are bringing elite stuff to the mound, they're a scary matchup. Now, St. Louis could say, hey, we've got Jack Flaherty, Adam Wainwright, the way he's throwing. They Jack the hasn't been the same Jack we Not saw. Not quite the though. same. Yeah. You're right. But, um, you know, I think Milwaukee is a more difficult draw than I thought they might have been, especially because of Corbin Burns. He's been a difference maker. And again, pitching tomorrow, as J.P. Morosi mentioned, he has been pitching like an ace in the last time we saw him. And we'll be game of the week live on YouTube in Detroit. He dealt. So tonight, one of the heroes for Milwaukee, a, a surprising one, Jacob Nottingham. A grand slam in the fourth inning, his first of his career after the game. He met with the media. Um, obviously, it's a lot, it gets easier. I mean, it's not easy hitting up here, but uh, to be able to see pitches um, day in and day out, um, to get your timing there, to be able to just keep working, keep grinding, and um, it helps a lot, but, uh, you know, the big thing is, is just coming in every day, just be ready no matter what, if I'm in or not in, and um, just keep trying to perform. Drew Rasmussen got the win tonight, Jacob. What do you what do you like about his stuff, seeing him behind the plate? Uh, he's fearless, you know. Like, that, that guy throws four pitches, um, and he throws them all for strikes. Uh he he has like a like a rising fastball, so it gets on you even harder than it says. So it's kind of crazy hearing that because he throws 98. So um, he has a heavy fastball, great off speed. Um, like I said, his command's good, and uh, when a guy's like that on on the mound, then uh, you could definitely feel it. So. If you were watching that video, you noticed the arm of Jacob Nottingham and the tattoo of Lou Gehrig. And you're asking, why is a kid from California got a picture of the Iron Horse tattooed on his arm? Well, Nottingham has lost two family members to ALS. And last November, he participated in the Scottsdale and Phoenix chapter ALS Walk, leading it off with a speech to more than 1,500 walkers about how ALS has impacted his family, and then had personal conversations with the people there. Um, one, I, it shows the, the, the special human quality that gets glossed over quite often with these baseball players that we watch every night and we look at as stat lines um, too much. Um, but to kind of speak about that is one thing. Um, and be vulnerable in that way. and, and the, But he's wearing it every single day. He brings that to the yard, Tom. Yeah, and not only just to wear that, but to be active, you yeah. know, and take a moment, in this case, two family members of grief and turn it into a positive, in his case, to try to raise awareness and, and to, to give the volunteer time. Hats off to Jacob Nottingham. That's impressive. And it, again, it further underscores the point that in the grand scheme, baseball doesn't matter. That being said, what he did tonight on the baseball diamond was so huge coming through nine spot catcher we know he's got pop he's shown that so it's not a surprise to see him go yard but in that position in this game again in that moment it didn't look like milwaukee was was going to touch danny duffy and then he comes through for his first slam i mean that's the biggest hit of his career probably yeah definitely for sure and remember he had a throwing error himself early in the game yes. a run scored on that didn't hang his head as you mentioned, his game as a catcher is to control the game back there. Offense is kind of a bonus, hitting in the ninth spot. But listen, he's taking an opportunity here. He, you know, Manny Pena is out for the year. He's not coming back. Torn meniscus. It's allowed Jacob to get some playing time here. And, you know, he made some swing changes. And hats off to him because he has really stepped in and provided Craig Council with some really thunder because he's a threat in the box. He, yeah. you, you saw it tonight. He's got big-time power. And then we saw toward the end catching Josh Hader and all the nasty relievers in the Milwaukee pen, which, as you underscored several times, not an easy task. Get he, some ice on that thumb, Jacob. <laughs> yes, rest up. He and Omar Norvaez, the two backstops for Milwaukee. So if you've been paying attention to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube, you have noticed that when Milwaukee's on, the Brewers rake. And you're, so the discussions of a struggling offense – they may not compute to you because of these two performances. September 7th at Detroit and tonight against Kansas City. 19 runs, 9 runs, 
35 hits total, including eight home runs and 19 total extra base hits. I think they like the YouTube button. I think they're going to petition to get have some more games here. <laughs> Can we be on tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that? Yeah, flex us as much as possible <laughs> for the YouTube game of the week. Perhaps we will have some more offense next week, our final game of the week live on YouTube. Cincinnati and Minnesota, the 25th of September. I'll be there. John Smoltz, JP Morosi, let's get you ready for it. We are underway here at Target Field. And we are set for Reds baseball. Swing and a miss, he got him. That was a great play. I didn't think he was going to get it. That's a gold glove caliber play. I got the heart of a champion, most definite. Better be weird. Down for the count, but I bounce back with a vengeance. I'm bad. The stock is with a deep blast. Welcome to the Reds. Max Kepler on the first pitch of the season goes deep. Nelson Cruz continues to be a bully. Up and out of the strikes, and it doesn't matter to Castellanos. A two-run homer for Buxman. Suarez is three for three. And gone. He's got another one. And the Reds sweep the doubleheader. Start for their starter, Rich Hill. A couple of hits over five innings. Bauer strikes out the side. Give me to that one. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube finale in 2020. Cincinnati and Minnesota. Tom Verducci, let's dive into the matchup and start with Cincy. If you were to look at the postseason standings and seating right now, you would see the Reds there at six, but it's a little funkier than that because they're 500. So are the Cardinals who have played fewer games than them. So that's why they're on the outside looking in. But Cincinnati is surging. You cannot debate that. Six consecutive wins, and they still got that three-headed monster in the rotation. Yeah, and that's why no matter what seed they have, if they're in, they are a nightmare matchup. That starting pitching staff, get healthy, Sonny Gray, Luis Castillo, Trevor Bauer. This is the number one strikeout staff in baseball. And I'm telling you, in postseason play, that's what plays. Take the ball out of play, out of play because you left, leave things to chance when the ball is in play. And if you got a team racking up 10, 11 strikeouts at night, uh, that's, that's a tough draw in the postseason. So to me, the Reds are a dangerous team playing well at the right time. So these are the NL wild card standings right now. Trevor Bauer, Cy Young contender, the leading Cy Young contender in the National League. And that lineup, Listen, like we've been talking about with Milwaukee, individual seasons right now, the lines don't look as pretty as you're used to. But if they get going at this point or in a short series, I'm still scared of Eugenio Suarez if he gets right. I'm scared of Nick Castellanos, who's cooled off after that hot start, but he's a professional hitter. I'm scared of Joey Votto. So I'm with you 100% on that being a suboptimal matchup <laughs> for any of the top-tier seeds. Now, the other side of that finale on YouTube is Minnesota. Right now, the four seed in the American League. And you're probably thinking, if you're a Twins fan, we got to face the Yankees. Again, in the first round, that is the 4-5. But they also have award candidates on their team, most notably Nelson Cruz in the MVP It's race. a great debate. I didn't think we'd ever have. Can a DH <laughs> win the MVP? And Nelson Cruz is making a really good case. I think it's going to be hard for him to win it because there's a lot of good candidates. And if it's close, most voters are going to go with a guy who has some defensive component to their candidacy. But Nelson Cruz has been 
that good and that important to that Minnesota team. And I don't know if you've heard or not, but he's 40 years old, Tom. I don't know if that's I don't mentioned. believe it. Hey, <laughs> oh, my gosh. The guy doesn't slow down at all. A big series that was dropped by the Twins on the south side of Chicago, hence the separation between the two in the American League Central standings. Um, they also, they're not alone. I mean, the Bomba squad, you don't get that nickname with just one guy. And the guy who is turning heads right now is Byron Buxton because he's right. And it's always been when Buxton puts it together, when he's on the field, he's on the field, he's putting it together, and he's putting on a show. And power. I'm not sure. I mean, listen, we saw glimpses of power, but not extended spells of power that we're seeing out of Buxton this year. This guy's gone through so many different swing changes, right? He's had a big leg kick, a smaller leg kick. He's kind of simplified things here. And it's really just a matter of repetitions for him seeing that many pitches. And man, he is locked in. I always thought this guy was an impact player if he hit about 230 with a little bit of power. He's that good defensively. Yes. But now you're adding this kind of power to that kind of a defensive player? Wow, that's a special player. Now, again, I joke about the Yankees' history in the postseason for Minnesota, but they did meet last year, and you, you can't turn away from what's happened. Now, the difference in the clubs this year, for Minnesota specifically, they made it a point to shore up the starting staff, bringing in veterans, and Kenta Maeda has performed well past everybody's expectations. He's become a top-line starter for the Twins, so maybe that's a difference. Randy Dobnak shows that he wasn't just a great story as an Uber and Lyft driver. He's a Rookie of the Year candidate this year, but a big bat was added to the lineup in the offseason in Josh Donaldson. Do you think that's the guy who could put them over the top against New York, should they face? Well, I like what you said about the pitching staff, but look, guys like Rich Hill and Kenta Maeda, this is now a better strikeout staff than the Twins have ever been, right? And I like the fact that they have pedigree and Josh Donaldson has pedigree. And he's a guy that gives you some swag. Oh, too, yeah. Right? Did you see this the other day? Oh, yeah. I was watching this. I mean, he's like, that's not a strike. Are you kidding me? So what does he do? He goes yard. Oh, he's not done yet. He has to get his point across again about that strike call. And he gets thrown out. He goes back and says, maybe I missed home plate. I got to touch it. Oh, as long as I'm thrown out of the game. <laughs> I might as well cover the darn thing in dirt. <laughs> Dan Bellino was the home plate umpire. Oh, like, yeah, good job there, Josh. Thanks. Good game. <laughs> I, I'm with I'm with Mark DeRosa, who said on MLB Central on MLB Network on Friday morning. Listen, Josh, I love you, but take it easy. I need you in the lineup in a situation in that kind of series. I don't think I've seen a guy thrown out of the game hitting a home run. <laughs> the last time it happened, Ted Simmons in the late 70s, the Hall of Famer Ted Simmons. It, but in my lifetime, I had never seen anything like that either. So that was all kinds of fun. Listen, you see weird stuff and fun stuff on YouTube all the time. We saw that in the game featuring the Twins. You will see the Twins featured on our MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube in a week against the Cincinnati Reds. Very much looking forward to that one and you joining us. Listen, it was a fun one in Milwaukee, especially if you root for the Brew Crew who came away with a big victory for Tom Verducci and J.P. Morosi as well as our entire elite crew. I'm Steven Nelson saying so long, and thank you for watching this MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube.